Michael. Yeah. Sunday night, and that means or Monday afternoon. I get the feeling most people listen to this podcast on Monday afternoon. That or Monday morning. Which makes which makes it really weird because I also send out, it's like, on Monday, I, I like if you listen to the podcast on Monday, and then there's a dojo on Monday, and then there's three bonus videos on Monday. There's a lot of shit on Monday. Monday is too much Rage Select Day. Like, it just, you know. It takes up the whole day. Open wide. I'm just pushing it all in there. I'm like, <laughs> here's some more. And then like, no, no, stop. Ah. Like that guy from uh, Monty Python and the Meaning of Life. <laughs> It's just like, <laughs> I'm about to Patreon bonus video, sir. It's wafer thin. <laughs> it's like, fuck well, off. <laughs> it's it's more like, uh, our fans tend to be like more like Homer when they're giving him all the donuts oh, in the world. Yes, yes. And they're like, more, <laughs> more. <laughs> yes, so welcome back, everybody. It's time for the Rage Like Podcast here at Rage Like Time, Jeff. And I'm like, uh, Michael, it's a weird week this week. Um, I didn't really watch anything that was, I would, it was like a, we had like a big holiday weekend. People were like, oh, what'd you do for the 4th of July? I ate four chili dogs and then my dog was so scared that he wouldn't eat or poop or do anything and he just laid in the corner and didn't want anything to happen. So the so. first half just sounded like a Sonic the Hedgehog day in the life of. I fucking hate the <laughs> fact that chili dogs are associated with that little blue motherfucker. I, I, I don't like Sonic the Hedgehog, but I do like chili dogs. It's fair. But I have a million dollar idea. But has anyone ever told you you run fast, Jeff? Uh, no. Nobody's ever seen me run, and nobody ever will. <laughs> <laughs> um, one time I was chased by bees, and I walked really quickly. Um, <laughs> Still no, sounds like a Sonic game. <laughs> I have no. Listen, listen, listen. I, I've got, I've got, a, I've got an idea. I've got an idea that's going to make you and me a lot of fucking money. Okay. Okay. You ready? All right. You know, you know that old joke that's uh, it's like I don't know if they tell this joke anymore. I'm just like, why do they sell hot dogs and packs of eight and buns and packs of twelve? Which of course they don't do anymore. They don't do anymore. Like they but sell it's an entire joke and father of the bride that I love. Hot dogs and packs of eight and buns and packs of eight. I got eight hot dogs. I got eight buns. I got a can of Wolf Brand chili and a block of cheddar. Bam! There you go, chili yep. dogs. The problem, though, Michael, is that if you are a single person, I want a pack of like three hot dogs and three buns <laughs> and a small block of cheddar because there's no way that I can eat eight fucking hot dogs in what? Like three? You'd have to eat hot dogs every day, which is impossible. And I'm not that guy. I'm not that Joey Chestnut guy well, like it's, it's two hot dogs for what four days two hot dogs a day for four days yeah no well first off that's not how i eat i eat like <laughs> there's never gonna be food ever again like then you'll definitely go through them in a couple days yeah but once you eat four <laughs> hot four chili dogs in one sitting the next day the last thing you want is four more chili dogs that's true like i don't know next year well, i'm just going to sonic i'm gonna go to get a cherry limeade <laughs> a root 44 <laughs> cherry limeade and a foot foot long coney dog did you know there's a place here in town casino El camino yeah you had the uh, uh, the like big ass hamburgers everybody used to really like a lot and they used to have this thing that was called the the texas tommy double dog and it was literally like a foot long bun with two hot dogs in it oh my god and then like chili and onions and cheese and fucking all the shit on top and it was like that's a lot of hot dog right there no, it is i don't yeah. know that i need that much wiener inside of me <laughs> uh yeah that's right um said no one ever so <laughs> so yeah I, uh, I i i watched a lot of old episodes of star trek and i watched um because you're watching new worlds or whatever and I, I don't like it i'm i'm sorry chris can come you next time chris is over here you can yell at me i've watched three episodes i'm not digging it it's not working <laughs> for fine. me like i don't i don't care so um <laughs> i i just everybody kept saying it's like old star trek and i feel like they don't have that that clever part of like old Star Trek has where mm -hmm. it's like, oh, we figured out you've got to reverse the dilithium matrix because it turns out the Deanna Troy is infected with the fucking warp monster and then mm -hmm. we run the engines backwards and it'll turn time and you're like, oh, weird. Okay, cool. Star Trek people were crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, okay, I tell you what. I watched one thing last week. I watched two episodes of Bastard with three exclamation points. Oh, that's right. That's a show. On Netflix and I did not care for that either. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> it was just kind of weirdly horny and kind of like like one punch man or uh the demon king of demon academy which one or whatever was that, that? One? um which one bastard yeah it's like it's like a medieval thing like the world was destroyed and it's like a medieval kingdom and there's like this girl and then her little brother and like the evil wizard that destroyed the world is like contained in the little brother and then she has to like fucking kiss him to get it out and then he turns into a big buff guy that can destroy all the evil monsters but she's like i don't want to i'm chased and it would be embarrassing to kiss anybody but then also when he turns into the weird buff 
uh, demon. He's also still has the mind. He, he's like got the evil demon mind, but also all the feelings of like the little eight year old brother, huh. adopted brother or whatever. And so he like is like, I'm going to kill everyone in the world except for you because I love you. And then she's like, oh, I'm strangely horny and attracted to you. And I'm just like, this is, I'm not in like. Yeah, that's uh, that's something. Michael, I'm going <laughs> to say this and I know what people are going to say. Generally speaking, I'm not into anime for the rampant horniness. No. I generally speaking am not into now like Spy oh. X family when they're well, you got these two characters that are attracted to each other but they're both stupid and weird. That's hilarious. Yeah. Right? Like and the your cosplay, it's amazing. When the real live women dress up in that outfit, it's great, right? But like generally speaking, there's some anime that just gets so fucking horny and I'm just like I'm not here for this weird the 17 year old girl has well, to kiss the, the eight year old boy to make the buff wizard come out. That's, uh. that's the thing. We're, we're, we're much older than what anime um, like uh, age groups used to be when we were growing Cause when we were growing up, we were like, the, we were the teenagers yeah. who were like, Oh, that's kind of funny. Right. Cause we thought, cause we're teenagers and it's not fucking weird. That Ron turned into a girl. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's not weird when a teenager is just like, oh, that teenager is kind of kind of hot, I guess, kind of question mark. Whereas, like, we're 30, 40-year-olds. I'm 43. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm 32 and you're 43, and it's just like, that's just, this, no, I don't, like, when I, I can't watch no game in life. Like, I, I watched it once, and I, and that took a lot to get through. Because it's super horny, yeah. Uh, but like, but it's super horny for like an old, an adult almost, and his very, very little sister. And you're just like, what the fuck's happening? <laughs> I mean, you know, there, there's some amount of horniness that I'm fine with, but I haven't yet. In two episodes, I didn't see anything in that show outside of the weird rampant horniness. And somebody's gonna be like, no, it gets really good at episode 45. And I'm like, I don't fucking care. Like, I'm not gonna do that. But. Yeah, it depends on the how horny it is. Like, I'm fine with Master Roshi because that dude's just a fucking crazy person. Yeah. But when it's like a bunch of teenagers being sexualized in a way that just makes me super uncomfortable i'm just not really good with that anymore like i'll be honest man Minetta has this time and place but if they took that guy out of my hero academia that show would be like 15 percent better if, yeah <laughs> no, that's true if he died randomly and, that would be and the no best one, use the best yeah, use if he died off screen and everyone was like and never talked about him ever again no yeah. one would bet an eyelash yeah because he's even making ever other people worse yeah he's making the fucking electric guy worse than, yeah than just normal. worse and worse anyway um okay I the grapist that we call him i i didn't um i didn't i spent I was, I was like i don't have anything to talk about and i spent fucking 10 minutes not talking about anything <laughs> michael just got back from watching the new thor movie i did i watched thor love and thunder tell me about it uh do you love guns and roses i'm okay with guns and roses because the, the soundtrack is just guns and roses okay like straight up like just somebody was just album. like yeah it's just a guns and roses <laughs> and a character is even like i love guns and roses i want to be called axel from now on you're like sure i guess <laughs> it just reminds me of that was that arrested development joke where tony wonder wants to name his dvd use your illusion he's like i found out that it was already taken so i'm gonna try use your illusion too surely that's available <laughs> uh so well okay outside of the guns and roses how was the marvel movie i i'm a little marveled out right now so mm -hmm. i mean like i'm not gonna run to the theater to watch it I'm probably going to wait for it to come on to Disney Plus because I'm just like, I'm just after Doctor Strange and all this other shit. I'm just like, I'm not in the pocket for got to go watch MCU stuff the day it comes out. Well, but. It's, it's a movie that's like, it doesn't have a lot that's that you can consider like you need to know for the MCU moving forward. I sure. Feel. Like it's a movie that you can watch and you'll be like, these characters are in it, these characters are in it. But it doesn't really like forward everyone else around them. Like the way you would watch like Doctor Strange or Doctor Strange stuff moves Wanda forward and it moves the Cisco America forward like yeah as well as himself like 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 that has a bunch of moving parts that move forward but this is very much a Thor story uh -huh. and it, so it moves him very much forward as well as you know any of his main side cast from Ragnarok for the most part okay and then so like it's not anything that I would be like if you if you miss it you're gonna like be like oh man I missed like the greatest cameo ever or whatever it's like no you're not really going to but you'll miss a really cool Christian Bale who like is the only one who is like in a different movie <laughs> kind of thing because everyone is because it's it's still it's like with Ragnarok kind of thing where Thor and everybody are still the the Taika Waititi way of joking the way in Ragnarok is sure. double down on that 
Whereas Christian Bale is just like, if he's joking, it's because he's fucking creepy as shit about it. Okay. Because there's a sequence where he's joking with somebody about it, but in a creepy fucking way. Because they're talking about something, and he's just like, what about this? And he does something fucked up, and they're like, what? You thought that was funny when they did it. <laughs> okay. I, I want to be very careful with this, with the answer to this question, Michael. So is there stuff in this movie that the internet could fucking blabber its blabby blab mouth about that's going to make it like you know the big thing from i'm not even gonna say it but you need know the big thing in in dr strange that nobody could shut the fuck up about like the all the the oh that the, part the yes. stuff you know the yeah. big part that didn't mean anything like well, no because all most of that stuff's in the trailers okay like the, we already know zeus is it like that that big sequence with everybody is the Zeus sequence. So is that kind of like the... Like you the, see a bunch of gods, but there's never... You're never like, oh, it's that god. It, it, like, if you're saying, oh, it's that god, because somehow you know what that god is. So it's it's more spoilery, like, the way that they put Hulk in the trailer for Ragnarok, and that would have been really cool to have seen that movie and not yeah. know that Hulk was in it. Uh, like, it. Like, if it wasn't for the fact that we knew for a fact that, you know, Thor female thor was in it right jane foster it's thor in the fucking trailer <laughs> it would have been a little more exciting but like but again you the movie would have said it right away anyways it's all yeah and even the, the zeus thing would have been somewhat interesting right if they hadn't put it in the trailer but it's nothing that but it's zeus like it's like are you excited to see zeus i don't know like how much do you like the character of zeus in marvel not a lot of people do <laughs> right right, right. Like there's one thing that you could maybe blather but it's the after credit scene yeah and that and that's you know that happens. So where would you put it? I mean, okay. Uh, I don't want to. I don't. I don't like to do the thing where we go. It's so subjective to say. Like in the Phase Four lineup. In the Phase Four lineup, where would you put it? Where would I you? I would say? put it after No Way Home, personally. After No Way Home. Yeah, okay. Because for Is me, it's No Way Home the top. No, it's uh, for me. It's Multiverse of Madness because I'm just a giant sucker for Sam Raimi. Okay. And uh, then it's No Way Home because I'm a sucker for Spider Man. Okay. But Spider Man doesn't have that story relies a lot on nostalgia. Sure. More than even uh, Multiverse of Madness does and i really like thor and, sh and has a lot of great fight scenes and got a lot of good visuals got great jokes a lot of great characters Those just haven't seen thor since endgame right like we, yeah a lot of the other characters we've we've run into them well i guess that's like in shang chi right? you know we've gone in length as to why we have our issues with it sure like i like that movie a lot but there's a lot you know to be desired in that film yeah and then what else was there after that? Eternals. Eternals. I wasn't uh, a fan of like, I, Black I, Widow. I was okay with Eternals. Black Widow and Eternals are on the bottom. Yeah. Because Black Widow is a lot of wasted potential. Yeah. And so it was, Eternals, I just found, it's really long, and I have kind of got bored after a while. <laughs> okay, fair enough. But yeah. Well, speaking of wasted potential... We had a we had a conference today. We did. Hey, everybody! Which I didn't watch because I was watching Thor. Worldwide <laughs> gameplay reveal, Ubisoft Forward, July twenty twenty two, Skull and Bones. We still think it's a tax game. Oh my god! Um, it technically is a tax game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to yeah. Be honest. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is one man. When they put the fucking like, t t quit being lazy, you guys. Like, don't. D don't put the pre-show up in the same video as the show. Just like clip that shit and show me where it starts. So I did watch this, um, but I had a really hard time, Michael, because my brain kept going like, hey, what's that over there? Are you hungry? I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> you should probably go smoke. That's pretty much how the uh, development of the game went, though, if you think about it. So, okay, I got news for you. Um, this is going to be really weird because, honestly, <laughs> There's just not much more here than what we assumed Skull and Bones is. It's it's just a multiplayer pirate combat. It's got okay, here's one thing that I found out. There are apparently like both PvE and PvP servers. Huh. So you just do like co-op against the computer with your buddies oh, that's or you can go on a PvP server where you can fight everybody. Um you start off shipwrecked with just a, a dow like a real small d-h-o-w like a real small ship yeah um you can go out it looks like there's a lot of like resource uh um um harvesting like you can but it's weird because so it's like, the cinematic trailer that's playing yes. right here this is like the actual what's going on in the story i guess this is kind of like the prequel the, like the prologue basically i yeah. feel like uh because it's like you you're you're a character that's trying to make a better life for themselves you stow away on a ship the ship shipwrecks you decide i'm gonna make a better life for myself and so you you put together like a little ship and you grab a harpoon and you go to make your way as a pirate it's a little weird this whole thing because you know i know that like pirate like the the 
the profession of pirate has become really weird. It's been very weird. Like, pirates are rapists and criminals and shit and like don't get me wrong i love pirates but like the they've got these weird like round tables where they're talking about they're just like ah, oh, i want to be a pirate oh i want to be a pirate oh we're gonna team up and go after you as a pirate well and i always like, think about the the south park episode where yes. cartman becomes a pirate yes but then it shows what pirates actually for the most part do yes uh, that part's kind of amazing anyway uh yeah like the it's it's kind of strange like they they have a bunch of developer interviews on their dumb pirate set it looks fucking weird uh, let me see if i can get to the point where it shows you what the actual game looks like uh because they spent a lot of time talking over uh, uh concept art <laughs> uh, yeah no, as, as they do but uh the so this is this is this is what this looks like there's a lot of like weird um like resource uh like hunting sharks and like pull up to an island and do kind of like a little mini game to get lumber from the island like hmm. you don't get out and then chop a tree you like okay. pull up and then there's kind of some menus that'll do stuff okay i gotta tell you uh you're seeing the actual gameplay i also just want to say for the record i think this game like graphically looks like it should have come out eight years ago no absolutely it, it looks does like not a, look it was made for the ps4 the ui is like weirdly clunky yeah oh yeah it's showing this ui that looks like something that came or again from around the assassin's creed 3 and 4 time yeah frame. when they were like the uis were all real big yeah and they which was kind of, like hard edges and stuff which is kind of nostalgic to be honest which is kind of funny yeah um they've got different ships with different play styles i mean no doy you could put different like weapons on that change the way things happen uh, no doy you gotta like feed your crew or they'll mutiny uh, no doy um from what I could see, like there's a part where you walking through a pirate settlement, kind of like getting missions, doing uh, repairs and stuff like that. I haven't seen any indication that there's anything in this game that's like a you board the ship and then you've got to do a sword fight or a, a yeah. gunfight or something like that. It's all very much bracketed to the ship with nothing else. And I that was the way they showed it before, but I think I was like really hoping that they would expand on that a little bit um like one of the things that they said that was really weird to me was like if you get if you get blown up you get to keep most of your cargo but then like some of it drops in the ocean and you can go get it back or other players can go get it and i'm like well why wouldn't you just drop all of your cargo like it seems like that would be the thing right to that's to keep people from being too upset about dying i think yeah but like th that's the way that multiplayer games hook people is by having like these big consequences that make for really epic moments yeah, like, but if it's a multiplayer type world then there's people who are going to grieve other people and that could become a huge issue i mean play on pve server but anyway i, I that's why i said i get why they would do something like that yeah in today's online world <laughs> yeah uh so this is like gathering resources like because you don't you don't online game a lot anymore jeff so that's true you don't know you don't know what they're like out there jeff i don't you don't i don't they're monstrous <laughs> um <laughs> So, yeah. Anyway, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to really talk about. I mean, like, you can play it with your friends. It's kind well, of it's just, an online The thing world. that we're talking about is that this thing exists, apparently. Yes. We've been joking for a long time that this was a tax game, and technically it is. <laughs> it has a release date. November of this year. That's fucking batshit insane. Yeah. That uh, we've heard nothing about this game well, for like a decade. <laughs> I tell you what, what else did we find out this week was coming out in November of this year? That's true, but we've, but we've been hearing consistently stuff about that no, no, for no. a while. No, no, no. But what fucking psychotic lunatic would put Skull and Bones up against, oh, up God, against of War? God of War? Yeah. And like, That's true. <laughs> like, what idiot at Ubisoft would schedule this thing in November during the big rush? Like, this would be better if they put it out in January of 2023 when there was like fewer games but like you're going to be putting this out amidst like the new call of duty and fucking god of war and like all kinds of big shit that happens around the holiday season this is going to get buried and i think that they're putting this out i think that what they did was somebody came in i think that this is like what happened with uh bioshock infinite right they got like the fucking the wolf yeah. drove up in his Lamborghini. They got the closer to take care of it. Right. It was like, okay, show me what you have. I can make a game out of this. 
Six months. Give me six months, and I will get a crap ass game out of this to fulfill the contract yeah. that Ubisoft Singapore signed with the the government. You like, guys don't realize those people very much exist. Yeah, that's very much a thing in game development. Yes, that they will show up at t- towards the end where they're just like, "What the fuck have you all been doing?" Because look <laughs> at this game. It doesn't. I mean, like, I'm not trying to be like a Debbie Downer about it, but it just looks like an eight year old game. No, it does. Like, it doesn't. Like, I look at just like the smoke and the light and the particle effects. It looks like a game that would have came out when Assassin's Creed 4 did yeah. and everyone would have loved it. Like, or, or even like, I don't know, two years after that, like early PS4, Xbox three six, or Xbox One days. Like. Yeah, well, that's the thing. That's what I mean. Like, it, came, it would have came out at a time where everybody wanted this. Yeah. And now we're at a point where Sea of Thieves has been around for so long mm-hmm. that that, you know, that it that got the itch that people wanted. And also Pirates of the Caribbean isn't even a th- popular thing anymore. Yep. So that's not even... They can't even capitalize on that idea. We're on to space and horror and space horror. Yeah, like. we've moved on. We've got we've moved on from Woody the the the, the doll up, up to our Buzz Lightyear dolls. Yeah. So I'm just telling you, man. Like, but like I just like the character models look really low fidelity and kind of just. I don't know. I mean, again, they kind of just look like a slightly cleaned up Assassin's Creed Four. Like, yeah, which is uh, depending on how what you want from that. Sure, I guess. But I've passed that now. Yeah. It's really weird. It's real weird. There's like, I don't know, you can do like fort attacks and you can do, you can team up with your buddies and go out and do stuff. They even had a thing where they said they're going to start doing like, um, they're going to, I mean, they're going to have like weekly challenges and all this bullshit. Um, well, once it wants to be an MMO, it wants to be the Sea of Thieves, but it, w- it would have, again, it would have been cool if all of those things hadn't already existed now. I just realized what this game is. What's that? It's, um, it's the next hyperscape. Oh God! Uh, like they try to do their own version of a thing that's popular. In this case, it would be Skull and Bones, or uh, yeah, Skull and Bones. No, well, no, it's Skull Rare. and Bones is the actual game. <laughs> uh, sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves. Yeah, God. <laughs> it's like what? Uh, um, yeah, Skull and Bones is super popular, Jeff. It's the most uh, popular thing Ubisoft's ever made. I know they started development on this eight years ago, and Skull and Bones or Sea of Thieves wasn't a thing at that point. But Assassin's Creed Four was the reason a lot of people wanted yeah, this game to Assassin's exist. Assassin's Creed Three, Assassin's Three and Creed Four, because yeah. those, those were great. I I loved those. Rogue. And everyone was like, so "We need to make an entire game like this." Yep. And then they announced Skull and Bones, and then nothing happened for yep. a decade. And uh, I get the feeling that this is going to come out. It's probably going to either do okay or flop. Um, it's possible. It's always possible that a game like this, it could just be like, oh, it turns out that um, some big Twitch streamer that I don't know who they are, like they play this with their community and it's huge because that can't happen. Like they played, they decided that they liked it and they wanted to play it with their community. That That's totally how it became a thing. Yeah. Uh, so that was like the whole thing. And then they had like a post game thing where they called the deck that's like there you remember like the combat casts this is like the skull and bones version of a combat cast where they have like two of the producers and they're playing the game together (laughs) like look at this fucking guy (laughs) anyway um i don't know man it just kind of all looks real bad to me like it It doesn't look bad it just looks outdated yeah that's the issue i have with it because i have every time it cuts to the the you know, the, the, the game boat? itself. <laughs> Not even the boat. That part where they're all standing in the market or whatever. Yeah. I was like, well, that looks like a game that came out in PS4 times. <laughs> like, every time it shows something, it looks like a PS4 game. Yeah. Which is, you know, the only good thing it's got going for it. Yeah. Because it means people don't need a PS5 for this game. <laughs> or or they a Series X. Yeah. Um... So, yeah, this Hopefully is Hopefully it won't glitch as hard, you know, a Cyberpunk or something. This is them playing it. Um... I, I, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I wish I had something more to say, but something more flattering to say about this. They got lemurs. They I pet tr- lemurs on these boats, Jeff. I try. I tr- Game you, changer. Like, well, I always try. <laughs> I always feel like there's something to say about everything, right? That, that everything except for Sonic. So he sucks. That's the end of the story. Uh, <laughs> but he loves chili dogs like you, that's, Jeff. That's not. You guys are the same. We have nothing in common. <laughs> nothing, I say. Um, but, uh, like I just I feel like this game has been in development for so long and if I want to be real honest about it even when they first uh, announced it it was like 
that seems like it could be fun, but it was never going to be like a thing that I was like, I'm going to get way into this. Well, I can't wait for it to get into that's it. That's how I felt too. I'm like, well, depending on how this goes, this could be a really cool game. Yeah. But I'm like, I couldn't say I was excited because we didn't know anything about it. Right. Well, even just the concept, even just like, what if Assassin's Creed 4 was multiplayer with boats? And it's like, well, that's got some interest to it, but like, I'm not into those games for that. I'm not into multiplayer pirate games. I like playing single player pirate games. Yeah, that was the thing I loved about um, that one was the single player pirate stuff. I killed every single legendary boat in that game <laughs> and then as it goes on it's like you know i don't know it just seems like like um you know it would be interesting if they, they i feel like they could maybe, maybe they have and they just didn't talk about it in here or i didn't pay enough attention my brain fucking stroked off thinking about chili dogs but like <laughs> um you know what if it was a th sort of thing where you had to build up your boat and it was really difficult and then if you got your boat caught in the open like you were in PvP zones, you know, trying to get between areas, then that could be real. And then if your boat got destroyed, it was just destroyed. Like, you wash back up on the island, or maybe even permadeath, right? You've got to start over from the beginning. That would be scary in a, in a PvP game. Sure. In a sense, yeah. But can you imagine how it would be, like, if you worked your way up to, like, you know, you've got a pretty decent ship, and then you're like, there's, like, a zone, like, a safe PvE zone and a safe PvE zone, and you've got to go in the open ocean between the two of them to get to the other PvE zone. That would be scary. Where the thing is, and then suddenly, you fucking, your little AI guy are like fucking like we're off to port bow and then like you look and you just see a dot getting closer and you're just like oh fuck <laughs> like <laughs> fucking drop the cargo like get, do, hoist the sails to 100 percent like fucking throw jimmy out of here get my lemur out of here and we gotta go like that would be really interesting that could create a really interesting game if it had big stakes the thing is that ubisoft has always been really safe and so i don't oh, feel sure. like they would push it you know that's the thing is that like, i can't blame them for not pushing it because like it's Said, the way the way multiplayer people are nowadays it's, it, they can get very insane and very intense true so i could see that being if that was a thing i could see a lot of people not wanting to even play the game yeah if that was especially you know people like us who don't have as much time to play all the games but you know you might uh, like it might and you might end up with a for honor right where you've got an audience so committed that you've got season 12 of for honor coming out inexplicably yeah, but, like yeah but this needs a lot of more this needs a lot more sales to make up for how long it took to make this thing so. that's true that's true yeah, get it I, sales never mind <laughs> I, I i got it i got it no i i i don't know i just i have the feeling that it's gonna end up being like did you get me it? mediocre <laughs> as fuck me mediocre af um sorry i was thinking of bojack when i said this. <laughs> mediocre af and that nobody's gonna be like you know super big on it like that's the thing i don't think it, i don't see this doing well and i don't mean that because it looks like a bad game i mean that in the sense that again this game no one knows any even knew existed yeah for the longest time and the people who did f stopped caring a very long time ago yeah the second sea of these came out this was completely off everybody's radar it also kind of runs like garbage on the stream i mean it's just the fact that they're streaming it but like for the visual fidelity of what's going on here i would expect this game to be running at like the fucking solid 60 frames per second at the very least like and that, i don't know that should just be stream compression or whatever but like that's most like again, again, i can't the, tell that's the, the thing the lighting engine seems really dull like the texture engine seems really flat like i i guess it's just the idea that in the time that they've been developing this are minimum graphical i mean i look at the shit that people are making in unreal engine 5 for jokes and it looks like 10 times better that's, that's than this professional thing. video game they've been like, working on this for so long that all of this everything in this video is outdated yeah it's like everything duke nukem forever came out yeah it's a shame <laughs> um anyway that's uh that's Ubisoft. That's Ubisoft for you, baby. Yeah, everything about this game looks like this, this. Feels like we're watching a video that was made in 2014. Like a PS4 game. I just like look at the, the size of the HUD. Like how much of the yeah. screen is taken <laughs> up. So much taken up HUD. on the screen. Like it's like that joke where they said the Elden Ring, Ubisoft's Elden Ring, and they had all the crap all over the screen. It's like, exactly that. It looks like that. And like every every ship has a big health bar when you mouse over it. And like there's, the, a, there's and a chat um, window that's huge. Only like, the middle of it is, yeah. is completely blank. Only yeah. the middle. Yeah. Of this entire screen. Like, at the very least, you could have just reworked some of this UI to make it slightly more streamlined. Yeah, holy shit. Look at that. So that it and look at that, the so way that, that, that popped up on the bottom right. Do you see that? The way that, That's exactly the way Assassin's Creed yep. 4 and 3 looked like, yep. the way that HUD was. Yep. So, I don't know. I mean, if, if, this, is your, if this is your jam, I, I, I really hope that this works out. I just... 
there's so much interesting and creative stuff on the horizon that I, I don't think I have time. I mean, Ubisoft is already on my shit list for a lot of reasons, and then 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 this doesn't seem like a great thing. No, uh, considering like, they haven't even they didn't even have like a announcements this year around the unquote quote unquote no, E3. I don't remember them talking about anything. Like, there's not a new Far Cry on the Didn't horizon. Hear it just or... announcement like they usually do. Right, right. Which is weird. I think that I might have been gonna have something in the future, but I mean, you know, they're just not... dance pirates. They're just gonna use every <laughs> every asset they can in this to make money. <laughs> every shanty. Yeah. Were they gonna think it's like three years ago when like the TikTok was all into sea shanties for a little while? They or were whatever. super in the sea shanties. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But guess what, Michael? That's not the only Ubisoft announcement that I have for this week. Really? But wait, there's more. Because we got the uh, trailer for Tom Clancy's The Division Resurgence. Is this a new game or a DLC? Uh, this is a new game for iOS and Android. Oh, it's an Android <laughs> game. Okay. This is them putting the division on. Okay, again. Cuz yeah, this is the Division 1 area. Yes. Yes. Um so Okay, look, I it's really weird to me. It's got to go off off script as if these as off if script. This, we don't have a script. We don't have a script. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking this about? Don't have a fucking script. Like I know that part of this is because I just don't like Ubisoft anymore, but like I listen to these developers all talking about the golden age of piracy and honor to pirates. And it, okay, I, I get it, right? We Pirates of the Caribbean movies, you know, yeah. we kind of glamorize pirates into these like funky, like real pirates were gross and these pirates are fiction. There's a great gag that, uh, so there's this Disney, there's this Disney like junior show about like the peter pan yeah and so there's these little kid pirates and so there's this like book or something that's like good good it's like a great pirate doesn't steal things it's just like i'm sorry what <laughs> i don't think you understand what a pirate is for disney <laughs> but then i watched this trailer and they you know it's just like uh yes civilization broke down and only like the secret people with guns and drones can restore order by shooting all these people that are out on the streets in new york and i'm just like is this just, just doesn't like I know that it's the exact same thing that the division it's one, division, the division two one, are. Yeah. It's just the thing is that I feel like we've—I don't know. I mean, so people kind of hate this stuff, but the way that the world is right now, I don't know that the concept of the division really like works <laughs> for me. Like it feels it, a little it weird. It kind of didn't work me. even then, to yeah. be honest. Like it's just it—it it works in the and it works in the sense that it's just an MMO and people want to play MMOs. Yeah, most people didn't even pay attention to the story. Yeah. But every time the story came up, it was always like, except for the secret police that are like <sighs> trained for this thing. I'm like, did you just say secret police? <laughs> yeah. It's like, don't worry about it. It's like, I'm going to worry about it. No, this is kind of weird. They've been at home with like guns and tack vests and drones this entire time, waiting for the secret signal for them to come out and reestablish order <laughs> by shooting everybody that's on the street. Like, yeah, it's yeah. like uh, so it's a little strange. I won't lie, but I don't know. Like, I get, I get why people like the division, but. As a story, the division isn't that interesting. Yeah, it's just a little weird. And also, this is a phone game, so no, we don't care. Yeah, um, it's just a phone game. It's gonna be free to play. Uh, as, as that makes sense. They're yeah, gonna, they're in charge up the wazoo for everything else. Sure. Uh, I've never really understood. I mean, like, um, Call of Duty is yet to put out their phone version of Warzone. Uh, is that the thing that they're actually gonna do, or is that just something you think they'll do? No, no, no. That's they've announced that. It's on. Okay. The, it's on the horizon. Um, like. Uh, everybody's kind of trying to get into that. I find it really weird the idea of playing an action game on your phone. Um, oh, no, I one hundred percent. They've a lot of people have tried over the years, and some people have. I want to say succeeded because there are some games that people liked at the time, yeah. but they never were. They were never very long. Yeah, kind of. Thing. And the way they controlled was very fucking weird. But nowadays, since you have um, Bluetooth controllers as well as controllers that just have Bluetooth in general that can connect to phones. Sure. It's a little easier nowadays. Yeah, you put the little bracket on your phone. And but, like, the issue the still controller. comes down to the fact that most people wouldn't want to do that anyways. At least, at least most normal gamers don't want to well, do that. Well, I mean, I sh I'm sure that there's, like, some kids where, like, your phone is your one device, right? Yeah, like, well, your parents yeah. won't buy you a computer, but you do have a phone, and so you're just, like, squeezing the life out of that phone, trying to get whatever you can to run on it. But... Not for me, baby. Yeah, like I said, normal normal gamers don't have that issue kind yep. of thing. And I, I, that sounds weird to say, but that's normal gamers have either a PC or a console. What are you, the Lorax? You sides. speak for the gamers I over do. there? I speak, <laughs> I speak for the gamers. I fight for the users, they say. Oh. Uh, no, yeah, that's the thing. Uh, again, most, most gamers, 
who at least most people who consider themselves gamers tend to either have a PC or a console. They don't. They're most most of them. They tend to shy away from phones. Yeah. In general, that's why you know the when Diablo Immortal was announced there. That guy says, "Is this a you know an off-season April Fool's joke?" Right. Because that's not what they want. They don't want mobile games. They yep. want a thing they can play on their PC or a console if they're if they're console gamers. Well, too bad for them. Also, good news for everybody else because you just gave me the perfect segue. Uh, Diablo Immortal is up to about fifty million dollars in revenue. Oh my god! Which averages out to about a million dollars a day. Uh, Jesus Christ! We yeah, did. It's a, only been out for a month. Yep, we did a breakdown on it a couple weeks back with Amanda. Uh, it appears that most of that, like 50 percent, is coming from the United States. Keep in mind, this shit hasn't even launched in China yet. Oh, Jesus! I didn't even think about that. It hasn't even launched in China. So I would love to. Um, I agree with everything you just said about gamers because that's who I am. But like, apparently, no amount of scum fuck microtransactions will turn people off it just doesn't matter I, I bet there's a plenty of people that are playing diablo immortal on their phone don't even know how bad it is they're not watching youtube videos of some guy doing a bunch of reddit math trying to break down how much it costs they're not even spending any money on the game they're just fucking blip, 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 blipping their way through monsters many um, of them probably haven't even got that far yeah they probably, probably so. the second they were hit the wall they're like no nah, i'm good yeah and then they just downloaded the next phone game that showed up yep but it definitely says something where you're like the fact that they have made that much money in such a short amount of time means that there are a lot of people there are a minority of people who are willing to spend like buku bucks yeah there's sons of there's son of whales out there hate that term i, <laughs> so I heard much. i heard a different term which is like apparently the one above whale is kraken <laughs> what yeah i heard somebody call oh my one, god I heard, I heard somebody call one a kraken and i'm like what's a kraken it's like what's well, somebody who spends like stupid amounts of money even more so than a whale does. Ah, uh, Ted Cruz. Yeah, basically, apparently. <laughs> I think that's where I, I think that I think it was that's how I found out. It Ted was like Cruz is a it was like a news story that was said that <laughs> the fact that Ted Cruz came out was was like, yeah, I fucking I love getting more overpowered by microtransactions. It's like, of course you do. Of course, of course you do, Ted. Of course that guy does that specifically. God but yeah, damn it. that's the that's where we're at now. I want to find him. Also, apparently the dolphins is a term. Yeah. Yeah, that's why that. one step below whales. Yeah. I want to find Ted Cruz. And I want to remove his beard. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to. I don't, do any, I don't want to do any damage to him as a person. I don't want to. I don't want to punch. I mean, I want to punch him, but I don't want to punch him. I just want him to not. I don't want when people think of men with beards. I don't want there to be the possibility that Ted Cruz comes into their head. Like that's fair. I am a man with a beard. I don't want to be in any category that overlaps. I love that Cruz. image with him and his beard and that long hair that looks really fucking weird. Yeah, that image comes up a lot. Uh, so yeah, Diablo Immortal ain't going nowhere. This is not a war. No, it's doing fine. Warcraft three, uh, re re re, whatever, remixed. Uh, the whales are ruining it for everyone. Yeah. In fact, uh, they just announced that they've got a, the second season is coming very soon. You want know to love about this? These news stories, by the way. What's that? It shows how bad Babylon's fall did <laughs> because this is a phone game yep and it's already making bajillions of dollars so much more than babylon's fall and babylon's fall went down to one guy yep. at, like at one point yep. so one concurrent player yeah it turns out you don't need to do a lot but you need to do it well at least so yeah um this is coming on august 4th so Two months after the original initial launch, the second season will be starting. That's legitimately surprising. One raid boss, three new battle passes. Oh my god! <laughs> and the uh, I think they said that there's a potential uh, for um, converting, uh, changing character class. So taking your character and then converting them just to a different class. Hmm. Which would, in some ways, ameliorate a little bit of the financial bullshit because it would only mean that you only need to get one character up yeah, and but you could go between them. You but probably got to pay for the class change after the first one. Probably so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, apparently, free to play people or, or even gotcha phone game people are like, that's really not a lot of, like, they're used to a lot more content. In, in an update than one raid boss and like a, a, a few new uh, cosmetics and then like battle passes and stuff like yeah. uh, so but I don't know it'll be interesting to see whether this is a uh, is this the uh, 
the Pikachu firework in, in somebody's bedroom? Is it going to burn bright and then go out in a minute? Or is it going to, or like next year, we're we just going to be talking about, yeah, this game made billion a billion dollars last year because people just keep spending money on shit regardless of how stupid it is. That's so. the thing is it could go either way. And with, with them doing it a second season like immediately, it, it feels like they're just trying to get as many as much money out of everybody as possible at the beginning. Yep. Which, I mean, I don't know. who. How much do you think it costs to develop this thing? I bet the $50 million they've already have probably has at least covered development costs and maybe some more on top of that. Like, well, they announced this, what, eight, this, that's, that's ages ago. Yeah. So the development costs the development costs have gone up quite a bit since then, but I doubt, I doubt it would have cost them 50 million to make a game like that i don't think so yeah i mean that's like half a star citizen like (laughs) uh and you know not even the most powerful gaming console can run star citizen so well what what how much was gta 5s because gta 5 used to be like one of the biggest ones oh i don't remember let's see gta 5 budget budget yeah because it was it was a huge deal at the time how much the budget was uh generated broke down no budget i don't want profit <laughs> just, yeah you type in just profit, budget so. 265, 265 million so yeah that's and that's that game yeah th- this is a phone game this is probably not even close to that 20 mil yeah I'm maybe 20 maybe 20 30 at most yeah so at they're probably most. already making back and that's the thing that's the thing that i keep wanting to like like hammer down right is that like you know you know who makes a shitload of money? Roblox. You know what we've never played or even looked at on this channel? Roblox. Yeah, they like, also don't really advertise all that much either. Nope. Uh, there are plenty of cash cows out there that make shitloads of money that we, as people with a very specific type of gaming interest, are just like, well, I don't fucking care about that. Yeah. Like, you know, Toontown I never made a lot of money. I never played Farmville once, and that nope. shit was all over the place. Didn't like play Farmville once. That that. The, 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 what was that penguin one? You know what I'm talking about? Oh, Club Penguin Club or whatever. Penguin. Club Penguin probably made a lot of money. Did back that in even the day. have transactions in it? Or it I don't know. I assume it was a monthly thing. I, don't know I, I never again. I never played Club Club Penguin or Toontown or whatever the fuck was out. You with had some time. problems with that Club Penguin over yeah. there. Yeah, that, that's why they canceled it because people couldn't pronounce it. I'm just kidding, though. No, but uh, uh, let's see. In other Activision Blizzard news, uh, so it appears that another. Uh, we have another organization that is uh, doing an examination of the Microsoft Activision Blizzard merger. Um, so oh. the United Kingdom is the United Kingdom has some like laws that have to just like go like um, like if what their their it was really interesting their um, their trigger was like if. Okay, if the UK gross revenue of the company being acquired exceeds 70 million pounds or when the resulting company after the merger would account for 25% or more of UK sales in their sector, oh. it immediately basically triggers like an investigation. And, you know, because this is Europe where they don't fucking like jerk off onto money, like money doesn't yeah. get them real hard. They're, they have like laws where it's like, hey, is this going to be good for this industry? Um which you know, we don't really do. We don't care. We don't, we don't they, care. <laughs> they, they care about the consumer. We were just like, how much money is it? Yeah, we don't uh, care. We don't give a shit. Oh, like, you dropped a bunch of money in my lap. Who who could have saw that coming? Oh boy, I don't see any problem. I don't with see this. any problems here at all. So yeah, they're in the very early stages of this. Like they're in the kind of just like public um, comments phase in the beginning, and kind of like it's it's one of these fucking things where it's like they're gearing up to validate the investigation before they start into seeing no. what the repercussions projected repercussions of this merger will have but it is interesting to think I, I i don't think that i've ever you know i've been doing this podcast we've done range like for nine years I've done this podcast for a long time and i don't think that we've ever gotten a sale so big that it's triggered like countrywide governmental uh like uh, uh investigation into like will this be bad for the market like as a whole uh, nothing gaming wise i know there was one that was looked at somewhat and i want to say it involved at&t in some way yeah but it, i think that still eventually went through yeah so yeah this isn't there's not much more to really say about it because it's just starting so 
you know. Um, yeah, and it could go either way, to be honest, at this go. point. Yeah. I think it's going to take an awful lot to, to kill this. I think it'll take an awful lot because Microsoft has got some some palm grease. they got it's a true. warehouse of greasy palm lawyers just ready to... Microsoft's to been around for a very long time. Get guys. them all slicked up. Longer I, than most people who've gone through this. I mean, listen, like, I know that Microsoft and gaming and Xbox and, like, we talk about it, but, like, I was alive in the 90s, and so, you know, I got to watch fucking Steve Ballmer say developers, developers, developers and like i do remember when it was like microsoft are not good people no like they are not like a cool no corporation is a cool corporation they like, used to sue the shit out of everyone oh yeah i mean everyone they used to well any anytime anybody was building anything that might conflict with anything they would buy them absorb them steal their tech and then fire most of the people that worked at that company yeah, exactly um it was they were very 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 insane yeah so and they they technically kind of tried that when they were starting Microsoft, but none of that. Everyone laughed in their face. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of getting laughed at in your face, Michael, it's that time of the podcast where we're going to talk about Electronic Arts oh, God. and their Twitter account. Yeah, I heard about this. Woo! This is dumb motherfuckers. This is the stupidest fucking thing I have ever goddamn heard. Yep. So, all right, let's go down the timeline. Um, Electronic Arts tweeted a tweet on the 30th of well, june let's talk about this tweet what what let's preface what the tweets are about so there's a series of memes right now called there are 10 but they blank 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 uh -huh. usually it's like there are 10 but they eat uh, they eat after a bit they feed a gremlin after midnight or something stupid like that okay like something's just like a tiktok thing or yeah it's, it's basically like they're like it's like this person's super beautiful but they do something that's like fucking weird as shit uh -huh. so it so it drops them down quote unquote and what would you what would you, what was your opener <laughs> this bullshit it's kind of like, like that yeah and so and so ea decided they were going to join in on the fun and yeah. then that's when this happened so ea tweeted they're at 10 but they only like playing single player games uh at which point everybody disliked that yeah everyone disliked that <laughs> like uh yeah like vince zampella i think just uh, you know from from respawn just tweeted like facepalm emoji uh so many of them they're all people who are making single player games for yep. them yep this one person, this is Zach Mumbach, is, uh, tweet, this company, this is the, the company that shut down my studio and laid off 100 great developers because they're making single player games. Um, I think that there was somebody that had a really good burn that was like, um, like you wouldn't know what a 10 is <laughs> if you. Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, something about I that. Remember like, that uh, this from a company that. I saw when they first tweeted this shit out, and it was funny seeing everyone dunk on them immediately. Oh, yeah, that's the same guy. Also, if you break uh, game rating scores down to a 10 point scale, most EA games are a solid six or seven, not because the developers are bad, but because EA, the corporation, forces them to rush out games. EA corporate leadership wouldn't know what a 10 looks like in terms of video games. <laughs> um, so there's been more information about this. Uh, apparently, oh no no no. Let's let's finish this part first. Uh, so eventually, EA like they tweeted at their own. They replied basically like it was roast well deserved. We'll take the L because playing single player games actually makes them an eleven. Yeah, that's that's it's, bad. It's stupid. That's still doesn't stupid work. Shit. That's even worse to be honest. Uh, there have been some reports that apparently the. Okay, one, the EA Twitter account is not run by anybody who works inside of EA. No, apparently. They're run by independent, uh, like, fucking social media organizations. Those dumb fuckers. Two, they were instructed to do this by, like, management. Oh, my God. The three, the idea behind this was that they would tweet that and then EA Studios would roast them to make people like the individual studios under the EA banner and make them look better than EA corporate as like a self-sabotage thing. Um, but that led to four, which is like actual single player developers that work for EA were like highly insulted yeah. because this wasn't told to them ahead of time. It was just like, ah, and they were like, motherfucker, you signed my paycheck. Yeah. Like, what the fuck are you doing? We're like, making <laughs> these games and this is very terrifying. Like what if somebody agrees with your bad take? It's going to make the new Dragon Age game look worse to them. Like you're paying for that, you idiot. It's a terrible <laughs> fucking thing to say. Yeah. Especially the way EA is with all their shutting down of studios yep, and shit yep buying studios and then like cranking out crap and then shutting them down and just gutting them yeah fucking craziness i mean ea killed bullfrog and origin 
They killed so many things, guys. Bullfrog at Origin. Like, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be playing Wing Commander Privateer and Magic Carpet 5 if it wasn't for those fucking <laughs> Andrew Wilson motherfuckers. Lane took Star Wars and kept it locked in a cage to the point where we're still waiting for Star Wars. Well, I guess Jedi Fallen Order, but like, motherfucker, two Battlefront games. They made two Battlefront <laughs> games, and then they were going to make another single-player game and then fired all of those people. Do you remember the, even worse. the single-player campaign of Star Wars Battlefront 2? It was garbage. It was bad. It was so bad. They went out of the way to be like, you get to be this Imperial lady, and then you're not even an Imperial for like longer than 20 minutes. And she's really stupid. Yeah, she's really she's stupid. Just like, They're all stupid. Oh, my God. The Empire is doing bad things. But I'm a special forces commando who's been set to like murder people all day. But they're also doing bad things. Oh my god! It turns uh, out we're the bad guys. Yeah. Well, the also guys wearing all black. Also, it should be remembered. We should always remember. Never fucking forget that fucking. If it wasn't for Battlefront Two, the whole question of loot boxes would not have been brought up. They pushed it to the point where like <laughs> Senate hearings in Norway. Fucking, uh, you can't release Diablo Immortal in fucking Denmark because they fucked it up for everyone. They had the surprise mechanics. Uh, surprise mechanics was was yeah was from that. And then what was the what was it that they t- the the term uh, the sense of pride and accomplishment? Yes, you feel from it or something like that yep. on Reddit. It was the most downvoted. Co- comment in reddit history yep and it was fucking amazing <laughs> you think a diablo immortal is bad it was the diablo what battlefront 2 walked so diablo immortal could run <laughs> it's true uh, it's very true so yeah apparently also they're having internal roundtable discussions with executives executives who are also angry who are just like what the fuck are you doing what are you people like, up to <laughs> what the fuck is happening yeah our stocks have dropped because you're fucking idiots because <laughs> of a tweet because you guys can't I don't uh you know what just a bad idea you know what I don't understand Michael is when a company like is let's take the three companies that we've talked about so far in this podcast Ubisoft EA and Activision I think that all three of them should just fucking stop trying to be cute for a while yeah they really should just stop like ubisoft is shedding talent yves Gimo took a one a 30 percent pay cut because of the lowered revenue not to mention the fact that apparently like you know they never really addressed the fucking like bad sex shit that happened oh, they to ubisoft. just tried to move on yep and then people just left instead. controversy after controversy at ubisoft without any real like games or gains to speak of and most of the people left for their like the people who make the the head people who make the games themselves yep it's fucking they're bleeding shit yep andrew and uh, and, uh bobby kodak and fucking uh you know B- blizzard just they cannot keep their foot out of their mouth for more than a week yep. like and you know if i was at ea it'd be like i don't want i Look, we are not trying to have Wendy's Twitter over here. We are trying to have boring, fucking generic, you know, not even Xbox Game Pass Twitter. Like, oh, what are you playing this weekend? Here's Naraka Blade Point. Like, we just want to be like, uh, d- d- Star Wars uh, Squadrons has a new expansion today. Check it out at this link below. Yeah, just the most like generic <laughs> End of line. <laughs> End of tweets. <laughs> like, yes. Like, why don't they just do that and let the gaming industry cool down? Because Twitter doesn't seem like Twitter is not chilling out. Oh, no. They overreact <laughs> to everything right now. Yes. They're very, very volatile at the moment. And this is the worst time to do something stupid. Actually, you know what? But see, here's the thing. EA actually did something cool this week. What's that? Um, they released this really cool trailer. I know you didn't watch it, but um, like of Skate. And it's called Still Working On It, Skate. And it's like the skate team showing a pre 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 alpha and it's got like a nice little soundtrack and it's just showing a lot of like the animations that they're making and it's kind of a fun little thing they show some like bugs and some things that are all fucked up um and they just kind of it's like a, hey this is a work in progress and also they're like hey sign up we're gonna be doing a beta soon and it's just like this is what you want like yeah. just a fun little video where people are like oh skate what's in this video a bunch of people skateboarding like yeah and just weird shit going on in it um, it's because it shows that you know yeah, we're, making, we're making the game that you guys have been asking for a very long time. Yep, this is still happening, guys. Uh, yep, and yeah, and they show the stuff that people want, 
and they show all this kind of crazy multiplayer, like massive multiplayer skate servers. This weird like pachinko <laughs> skate thing. That's like, crazy. Um, and yeah, this looks cool. And like, I don't, you're not hearing the sound for it, but then at the end, they kind of transition over to like the more finished version of the game yeah. in a very small location. And like, hey, it looks like a skateboarding game. Like, cool. It looks great. Uh, people, people have been wanting Skate 4 for ages. Yeah. Like, it, used, it was one of the running gags for E3 stuff. Yep. Was like, well, how much did you guys want to bet Skate 4 is going to be announced? Like, every fucking year. Yep. Every year. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was a nice little trailer. Um, bada bing, bada boom. Go. Uh, I hope they get Jason Lee again to do the, go the do your thing. tutorial. Oh yeah, yeah. He did the tutorial for all three. Uh, if I remember okay. correctly, at least. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's still very early on in development, and there's a sign up for basically beta testing. It looks like there's some kind of multiplayer, as I said, thing. So yeah, uh, go check that out. Skate. But you know what? We had a much bigger trailer this week, Michael. The father and son cinematic trailer for God of War Ragnarok. Yeah. I couldn't even wait to put this in the trailer section. The boy of wars are back. Got to put this on front street. It's a very short cinematic trailer showing Kratos and a uh, 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 boy. What's it? Atreus. Atreus, Atreus yeah. Uh, <laughs> was, like, we've gotten to the point uh, where even it took me a second to remember his name. Well, I was going to call him by the name that's revealed at the end of the big thing. Oh, yeah, thing, there's that too, like, but we can't really say well, it unless you've played that game. I don't know. Well, it's been a while, so maybe yeah, still Yeah, probably say. so. Um, I mean, you know, I know this is a cinematic trailer, but it did make me remember just Turns how much was I Chris liked. Chris Hemsworth the whole time. Nobody knew. Just how much <laughs> I liked playing Thor, uh, Thor Ragnarok. And I don't just mean Thor, much, by the way. He's just straight up Chris Hemsworth. Uh, <laughs> God of War Ragnarok, or just how much I liked playing God of War like just seeing that axe come back in his hand is one of the most satisfying game mechanics of all oh, time. Oh, like, Return axe to hand button. It was that uh, great thing where like this is must be how Thor feels all the time. Yep, you just punch the guy and then you hit the thing and just wow, and just hits people on the way back. Yeah, oh, it's fucking just the best. It's great. Um, the trailer had what appears to be a big Fenrir wolf at the yeah. end of it. Like you know, that's this pretty comes cool. Out. Way sooner than anybody expected. Yep, and it's coming out in November. Well, there was all this like weird stuff back and forth about like, is it coming out this year? Is it not coming out this year? Like, well, because that was the thing for a while is that a lot of games would be announced coming out in a specific year, and then the last second it would get pushed every time. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but that wasn't the only God of War trailer we had. We also had the uh, Collectors and Yotnar Edition unboxing trailer. Uh, did you watch this, Michael? I did actually. With this guy, the guy that plays Thor, who like we haven't actually seen in the game. Yeah, we don't know what like, the guy looks like. <laughs> I mean, this guy did a really good job of just kind of being like a big excited dork for like the shit in this box. The like we know he'll look like this per se, but we just don't know what he's like. You know, in the game, I guess. Yeah, if that makes sense. But, yeah, uh, they were very excited about what they have here. Yeah, he's. I mean, this guy, like, this is the kind of guy that if you're doing, like, a corporate unboxing video that you want because he just, he's very laid back. He does a really good job of just being like, oh, shit, what are these, dice? Fucking cool. These are cool dice, man. Like He's very humbled to be there is really what it comes down to. <laughs> yeah. He seems really excited at the end when they tell him that he could take both of them home. Oh, so, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's two different versions. They're mostly the same. Um, well, the main difference is uh, the Mjolnir thing. Well, they both have Mjolnir. Do they both have Mjolnir? Both have Mjolnir. One of, them did. one of them has one set of dice. One of them has um, like this dwarven dice, and the other one has Brock's dice. But then also this, uh, the the Jotnar edition also has like um, a map, uh, like a cloth map oh, in okay. it. They both come with a little Mjolnir, um, which is kind of interesting. I do like the idea of. I, I don't know. The internet's all up in its business about just like it doesn't even come with a CD. And yeah, it's that's like, a surprising yeah. thing. It's a, it's a steel book with uh, downloadable codes in it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't care. Uh, you get like the soundtrack and the art books, and um, it opens up, and then yeah, you've got the the hammer. So the the collector's edition has like two little statues, like the things that Treus yeah. carves. It's got a set of dice. It's got this Mjolnir replica. Um, it's got the steel book, and that's pretty much it. Um, the other one has, like I said, I think it's got more dice, uh, and it's, it's got, got a little pin set, yeah. pin set, yeah, with the three different, uh, Falcon, Bear, and Wolf bin, 
Uh, we didn't ever really talk about stuff like this on here, but you know, it's kind of cool looking at. It's well, it's just really cool because all of this happened all of a sudden. Yeah, like because there was because we didn't know when the release date was going to happen. There were rumors when they were going to announce it, and then that's when the dick pic stuff started happening. Right. Because people were mad that they didn't announce the release date that day, which right. is still fucking weird as shit. And then and then just all of a sudden, they were like, okay, now we're just going to announce everything, like, at once, just randomly. Yeah, there's a record in the Jotnar edition, has a soundtrack on it. Okay, that was the and main difference. And then it comes with the, the Mjolnir, so... Uh, yeah. I love the look of their Mjolnir, by the way. I like that it's smaller. I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, I've been looking at big ass Thor's Mjolnir from. Uh, well, that it's just it's not like that big square sort of look too. It's it's got this very stylized bottom of it. Yep. That I think is really fucking cool. Kind of angle, little angles and stuff. On it's the top. really cool. And then we also we we are gonna have a Thor that's a giant asshole. Yep. And I'm kind of excited about that. I like his big belly. Yeah, I like he's his a big, big fat Thor, like the way he's apparently supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we got all that. And let's see, uh, what do we got left? We got time for one more? We got time for one more. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, yeah, this will this will work. Um, and last but not least, speaking of Sony, we got a job ad. Uh, everybody knows the best the best sources of information come from job ads. That's true. A lot of cool shit has happened on accident. Okay. Uh, that was spotted on Reset Era that appears to be... It appears to be somebody. It appears to be an ad for uh, somebody to join their team to create emulators, like specifically mentions. It says our software development engineer position works on the tools and technology team at PlayStation Studios to support the newly relaunched classics for PS4 and PS5. Classic games run via emulation of l legacy PlayStation platforms. As a classics engineer, you would work closely with a group of other engineers, producers, and QA teams to fix bugs, add features, and develop new emulators. Which, okay, we know PS1 emulation, PS4 and PS5 are all fine. For like, the most part, yeah. Uh, PS2 and PS3, but it seems like they might be making an actual honest-to-God non-streaming local PS3 emulator I hope so. for PlayStation or even PS2. I'd be fine with it. I'm good, good with either. Yeah, like, I'd I'm, be fine with either one of those. It would be super cool because I, I did recently download or I recently upgraded my PlayStation Plus, uh, to be the whatever is the premium, I guess, whatever the top one is. Yeah. Because it's like 40 bucks Ultimate for the rest of it. And yeah, there's a, some decent stuff on there, but they really need. There's like, there's a lot of PS3 game stuff that I would love to play. Yeah. That is just not doable at the moment. Like, like they're all streaming things. Like, I, like Bionic, Bionic Commando Rearmed is on there. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'd love to play this. Like, it's a streaming one. I'm like, well, I would rather it not be streaming. <laughs> it's kind of weird because there's got to be some licensing problems because a lot of those games like Bionic Commando Rearmed, like, I know that those work in a Windows environment. There are actual Windows versions yeah, of those games. There are PC versions of all so, those things. So, like, I, I don't know why it's so hard to kind of get that. It's, uh, again, it's got to be a licensing thing. But Well, the surprising thing is the fact that Rearm 2 is is not a streaming game. Oh, it's a download game? If I remember correctly. And and even and even on the Xbox Series X, Bionic Commando Rearmed isn't backwards compatible the way Rearm 2 is. It's that mustache, uh, man. Yeah, the, the mustache. The giant, power of the mustache. Giant ginger mustache. Um... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I uh, yeah, I really hope. I mean, I I hope that this means that Sony. Okay, I'll just put my cards on the table, Michael. Like I I've said it a bunch of times, I'm gonna keep saying it again. Uh, PS3 backwards compatibility, I think, is stupid. I, it's full of garbage. Most of the best games from that generation have been either remade or re-released in a way to be backwards compatible. Not all. I get it. There's stuff, but I would much rather have them make something where every month they could put out two new PlayStation Two games because there are so many PS2 games that are still so hard to play. Oh, there's tons of them anywhere. And the stuff they put on the that collection is the stuff that was already released. Like most of that stuff, most was, of the downloadable stuff at least. was already downloadable. Like Dark Cloud, yeah. Rogue Galaxy, and like War of the Monsters Red and stuff Dead. like that. Yeah, um, one, Red Dead Red, 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 Revolver. Revolver. Yeah, uh, a lot of that stuff was already playable on the PS4. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I want them to get outside of that and start to get to the more esoteric stuff. I would love it if we got stuff like rule of rose or michigan report or like i don't think we're ever going to get that stuff because of licensing probably but not i would i would at least like god of war one and two to be not streaming that would be great especially if they could do some of that xbox shit and like make it like up and like look a little bit oh, better be like because those games already look good i'd love to be able to go back and play well I've, I've i've already got the xbox you can already play the hd um metal gear two and three on but yeah but i would love to for 
you know, to be able to have all four, because you can't play Metal Gear Solid 4 outside of streaming still. Oh, yeah, that's true. As far true. as I know. That's, and that's true. I would love for Metal Gear Solid 4 not to be streaming. <laughs> yeah. And I want easier access to Metal Gear Solid 1 again. Also, original, you can compare original uh, Demon Souls has <laughs> uh, been locked up behind the PS3. That's true. Exclusivity for a little while. But, uh, but so. uh, I'm, I'm, God, I'm really tempted to try Demon Souls now because yeah. it's part of that thing. And I would be able to do it now if I wanted to. It's streaming, though. Hmm? Is it it's streaming? It's a PS5 game. The new one? Oh, the new one. Yeah, because the, oh. the new one is part of the thing. Yeah. So I would be able to do it if I wanted to tune down. Yeah. But I still haven't finished Elden Ring. So. You can. Uh, <laughs> It'd be kind of weird to go can, back. <laughs> you can play along with uh, John and I. Full playthrough. Demon Souls. That happened. Uh, oh, yeah, that's true. So you could just follow along. Demon Souls is both easier and harder. You just have to know that's about world, world tendency. I'll explain world tendency to you. I, you know what? Let's take a break. I'll explain world tendency to you in granular <laughs> detail until you want to punch me in the face. And then after you punch me in the face, we can come back for part two. Sounds great. And Michael, we got, I, man, there was a lot of like gaming announcements that came out this week and a bunch of them came out like the day that we're recording this. I just didn't have time to like put them in. They'll, they'll, they'll be in next week. Uh, but one thing that we did find out this week uh, that was rumored a few weeks back was that Lollipop Chainsaw is getting a remake. Yes. It's a little weird though because. Yeah, with some st- revelations that came out recently. Yes. Yes. Um, so Suda51 and James Gunn are not involved. Uh, I think like a lot of people are just like, grr, handshake, why not? And it's like, well, if it's just a it's just a straight up remake, like what the fuck would they do? You know? That's true. It's not like they need to James Gunn to rewrite the script. Like they're just gonna remake it with better graphics and stuff. Uh, they don't need Suda fifty one to do it. I actually kind of feel in a lot of ways like bringing Suda fifty one on to deal with like gameplay is not the you know he's he's a he's a vibe guy not yeah. a gameplay guy uh, could, like uh, it's just weird only because they didn't know yes that's the only thing yes. that's weird about it yes uh so this is from yoshimi yasuda who was like the producer on the original game announced that they bought the rights back to it and they're going to be remaking it um the one thing that's a little bit of a big red flag to me is that apparently they're going to have to take out like 15 songs because of licensing because of music licensing at all to be honest <laughs> it sucks i hate the music industry with the fiery burning passion of a thousand sons just like fucking let them do it man that's like, the one thing that i knew was going to happen when they announced this because yeah. it's it's james gunn here's the thing that this was the first time my first uh run into james gunn's playlist yeah kind of thing was was this and, and not all of them were even like the actual band yeah playing that song so but yeah again i'm not even close to surprised that that tilt even that happened just a little bit yes tilt that microphone down just a little bit there you up, up, up a little bit hey, hey, there you go <laughs> Get a little crunk 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 for the people yeah so um I also uh, there's I was looking at the comments. This was on like a Polygon article, and uh, it is kind of an interesting question about like how will this game be received when it's re-released? This kind of cheerleader, sexy chainsaw, boyfriend head. Like, there's a lot of stuff in here for fucking the internet to get mad about. The like main, the main issue again with the soundtrack thing is that James Gunn. Picked, a lot of these songs are picked very specifically for the moments. Yeah, especially the way the, the way Guardians of the Galaxy was. So that might also be kind of it might just change the whole tone of certain things. Yeah, I agree. So I don't know. I mean, we'll see how it goes. I mean, I'm not opposed to the idea of remaking the Lollipop Chainsaw. Um, I just kind of wish it was more of like a remaster, I guess, than a remake. Like that'd be cool. Oh yeah, I would have definitely enjoyed a remaster more with it, with everything original still. But I'm I, at this point, I guess beggars can't be choosers, I guess. You know what I really want, though, is a, a remake. If they were going to remake something, I feel like they should have remade uh, Shadows of the Damned. <laughs> I would <laughs> love for Shadows of the Damned to get a remaster. Talk about that a PS3 game, game that I would like to play again. <laughs> that game has my favorite boner joke of all time. Oh, yeah. The big boner. Check out my big boner. That's such a weird thing. It's like the only thing I read that and like the 
running up the lady's body to go to between the different areas. Yeah. Like that it was fucking crazy, guys. That game is weird. I loved it. It is weird. I loved every moment. Someday of it. I got to remember. I, it was on my short list for a while there for like a uh, potential sequential, but like uh, we should. I would, uh, I'll be totally down with that. I just don't know if it's. I gonna will quit Duke Nukem right now to do Shadows of the Damned. <laughs> well. Ow, my arm. Stop <laughs> twisting it. Oh, no. That's what we should do after this. Uh, <laughs> you know. I mean the podcast, not the Duke Nukem. Oh. <laughs> uh, let's see. From there, we also found out that we... Okay, so we are getting a Lollipop Chainsaw remake. We are not getting a Grand Theft Auto 4 or Red Dead Redemption remake, apparently. That's a shame about the GTA 4 one, at least, because I love GTA 4. I'm more uh, mad about the Red Dead thing, because I feel like if they got Red Dead on the PC, then suddenly the modding community could go to fucking town. <laughs> That's true. Making Red Dead Redemption 1 look like way better than it was ever supposed to look. Well, the main uh, issue with this is that the reason they got fucking shelved right. is them not learning their lesson on what the reason it was shelved. Yeah, like apparently, okay, this is a lot of this is rumor. It's from a, a, a trusted kind of Grand Theft Auto insider that said like, yeah, all the like negative backlash and bad sales figures on the Grand Theft Auto trilogy made us uh, re rethink it. It's just like, well, you fucked that up. Like, yeah. like it, everyone wanted those games. Yeah. But you fucked up how they worked. Yes. You fucked it up. Like, you you didn't give... I mean, there's a whole what happened about, like, the yeah. fucking... You destroyed those games. Yeah. And then you were, um, were wondering why they didn't sell well? Like, you, you basically... That that what's that that re restored Jesus painting that looks like a monkey? That's exactly it's, what it was. That's what they did to three games that are universally beloved. It's that fucking meme like, of Eric Andre shooting Hannibal Buress. Right. <laughs> Why did the gamers do this? Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, motherfucker, you like. I would buy the shit out of a GTA, GTA 4 remaster. I was going to buy the, uh, that trilogy, but then all of the things happened with yep. it. Yeah. I didn't even buy it for Rage Select because uh, San Andreas was on Game Pass, yeah. and I played it. I was like, "This is shit." It's garbage. Uh, Absolute fucking garbage. It did. It did though create one of the finest moments of all of Rage Select. That's pretty amazing. Uh, I love that video so much. Where the and apparently that just happens all the time. Like it wasn't just us. Like that happens all the time at the end of that mission. It like to everyone apparently. Uh, that's what makes it that much funnier. It's so good. Anyway, yeah, uh, Rockstar. Why Rockstar in two K? Why are you so why are you so stupid? Like, Stupidest fucking idiots on the world. Fucking, everybody wants to see Nico Bellic come back. I just want to see... I would settle for if they would just... Uh, remake the trailers for Grand Theft Auto 4 had the cool with that, banging yeah. his trailers and then like if they remade it and it sold really well then they could have remastered The Lost and the Damned and The Ballad of Gay Tony which were some of the best DLCs that ever existed and if they put out Red Dead 1 then you could fucking mod Thomas the Tank Engine into where Dutch is and it would be great like it you know just, God, you could have <laughs> do so, if they because that's the thing is that that's why I'm not like uh, I'm not upset about it because if they if their versions of remasters would have been those yeah then fucking hell those games would have been awful that is true although yeah. like looking at looking at what red dead Rede redemption would have looked like with that weird ass art style would have been really funny <laughs> oh yeah the kind of like crazy cartoon yeah it would be yeah. a completely different fucking game oh yeah yep yeah, also i wish those glitches that happened in original red dead redemption would happen mm -hmm. do you ever get any of those i don't know one of my favorites are there's two that i that i ran into very early on or three actually one is the people turning into or the birds turning into people okay so they're just like because you could see the birds flapping but instead there were people oh, flapping <laughs> i have seen that in the yes air. yes another one is that there's a mission about a guy who's trying to make a flying machine uh-huh uh, mine glitched that at the last the last cutscene he turned into a horse <laughs> so it was a horse on horse trying out this flying machine and if you know what happens at that, it's even twice as funny. <laughs> okay. Uh, and the third is that for some reason, stagecoaches would just shake violently <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> and we couldn't finish, me and my brother couldn't finish this one mission because we started it and we had to get on a stagecoach and then it just started fucking losing its <laughs> mind. Okay. And we were stuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a real shame when companies, especially because... Like, at least with Grand Theft Auto 4, Grand Theft Auto 4 had a PC release, right? Yeah. And there are mods and there's stuff that you can do that are good. Amazing, amazing uh, mods for it and 5. Yeah, but Red Dead Redemption has never gotten onto the PC. Nope. And I really, really want it to be just people to see what people are trying do. to make it based off of 2's engine. Yeah. 2's, 
Because isn't two on there or something? Well, two or... has armadillo and like a lot of the real estate from one. You get to it at the very end. No, but two's uh, on PC, right? Uh, yeah, 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 two is. Yes, yeah. two is. Because last I yes. they want yes. people were trying to remake yes. one using our 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 Red Dead Redemption two. Yeah, because all of that stuff's there except for Mexico. I don't think Mexico is there. Mexico is not there. Yeah, that's it the only is. part you can see it. But if you get across the river, there's actually nothing there. So. No. Uh, so they would just have to rebuild all that shit. Uh, but that's not the only bad news we have from Rockstar because they're also fucking sent out some DMCA claims. Um, and this was specifically to a Patreon, um, this guy named Luke Ross, uh, that was a Patreon modder that specifically mods VR into games. And that's like, interesting. He's done it with a whole bunch of games. So he made one for Grand Theft Auto uh Five, Red Dead Redemption 2 and Mafia all of which are 2K owned games yeah. and they sent him like a cease and desist based on I think it's one of these like you're using our terms which he's like well I'm not using any like logos or art or anything it's just like this works with Grand Theft Auto 5 uh, but he's in a slightly sketchy category because some of these VR mods are free but I think like the Grand Theft Auto 5 one like you have to be a patron to get the build yeah. uh, type like he, of thing he's making some type of money off of this yeah like Patreon you can you can claim their donation-y type things yes but uh, it's still kind of an earning thing well, he also told The Verge that he makes $20,000 a month oh, for yeah. his Patreon that's backers. So. Definitely, definitely good. Yeah, that's, uh, I would definitely send something for that. Yeah, but he's got VR mods for Horizon Zero Dawn, Dark Souls, Remastered, Cyberpunk, Elden Ring, all that stuff. Uh, apparently, though, the interesting part of the story is it hasn't been totally resolved yet because he's like, hey, what the fuck? I'm, I'm actually, like, I know the rules and I'm not breaking them. And Patreon has told him that they will attempt to like negotiate with 2K That's interesting. about just like hey what are you what are you doing again here like what the fuck is going on here yeah. like explain yourself like instead of cuz it could just he be makes the, enough money that they would be cold to helping him out it seems <laughs> yeah the last thing they would want is for somebody to make a 20k a month that they get to yank 10% of to like go away it also change a press it'll also set a precedent yes. quite a bit so that's good to be good to nip it in the bud first yes uh yeah uh let's see uh in other bad news well actually this is really interesting news because uh sucker punch came out and specifically made a statement saying that they are not working on a sly cooper or infamous game like it's a little weird to have a, a company strange, that is not yeah. coy that's just like we are not doing either of those things Shut the fuck up. Like, I, they're probably making Ghost of Tsushima too. Ghost of Tsushima well, made a are. shitload of money. But, and it's um, going to have Sly Cooper in it, and then that's going to shock them all. <laughs> fucking the Sly Cooper outfit was the reason I deleted all my save games. Uh, there was a <laughs> cosplay to make you look like Sly Cooper. But, um, yeah. As our games continue to grow, this is a quote from them, growing scale and complexity, they require full attention of our studio. With our focus on our current project, we have no plans to revisit Infamous or Sly Cooper right now, and no other studio is currently working on projects related to those franchises either. So, you know, on the one hand, that's like bad news for fans, but on the other hand, like, you have a, you don't you have, have to a wait. have answer, yeah. Yeah, you can, you have like, you There's no speculation to, like, in there. Keep your breath held, so... Uh, they weren't even like, hey, wait to find out. They're just like, no, we're just not doing shit. Like, yeah. we are busy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that does, though, because they had a job listing a little while back for, like, a stealth action uh, person. And so if they're not making a Sly Cooper game and they're looking for a stealth action developer, again, that seems to indicate Ghost of Tsushima 2 pretty hard. Yeah, that so. seems that's just that's what that game was. Yeah. <laughs> At least in, in very specific ways it was. But, yeah. Uh, let's see from there. Uh, what's next? We have <laughs> some more bad news. Well, uh, depending on who you are, I guess. That's correct. Uh, hey, everybody, it's time to bash on blockchain. It's fun to nope. bash some Web3. Uh, last week, Polium, uh, a, a company so stupid that they couldn't even get the Twitter account that didn't have a not even one, but two dashes behind the actual company, quote-unquote company yep. name, announced that they are making a Web3 console. The, uh, the They're very excited. The Polium One. 
Michael, uh, did you? How much have you looked into this? I've. I ha- the, okay. This is my favorite part. Yes. I haven't looked into this. Twitter decided to give me the information ah. this because their people have been dunking on these people so hard. Yep. My favorite. My begi- the way I found out it existed was uh, people were making fun of its logo. Yep. Because it's a game. It's the GameCube logo. Yep. If you twist it in very specific ways. Yes. It's and a GameCube then, logo, but the 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 slot is in a place like where it's not a G. It's a P. So yes. Exactly. And then and then somebody said, "So what games are on this?" Yep. And then the guy was like, "It's gonna have all these things." Like that's not what I said. What games are on this? <laughs> yep. Let's see. And then it just is... got worse. It just kept going. <laughs> it just kept going from there. <laughs> uh, yeah. Here it is. Uh, As a consumer, why do I care? Says Tom on Twitter. Polium. The console will allow you to play Web three games more efficiently. Plug in and play Web three games using one wallet. Tom says, "What games do I play?" Polium says, "Games on Solana, Ethereum, Immutable X, BNB, Harmony, Wax, Polygon, and EOS." Devs will receive an SDK to make the games compatible with their console. Tom says, "Okay." But what games? It just got worse. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then people looked at the controller when they were showing off the controller. Yep. Like, we have a wallet button. They're like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Yep. Um, oh, my God. It's fucking funny, My guys. favorite thing, though, Michael, is did you see what they said the specs are? No, I okay. didn't. So let's just, for people at home who haven't seen this, this thing is about the size of a controller in the shape. It's like a box that's yeah. about the size of like a standard controller. It's like a Chrome OS box. A little taller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you put a Raspberry Pi and, or a, like micro, a micro ATX maybe. Something real small. In there. It's real tiny. Um, so, 4K, Ultra HD, Touch ID, which is an Apple product that they will never be able to use because it's like copywritten for yeah. Apple products. 8K HDR, ray tracing, 120 frames per second. All right. Now listen. Now listen. Listen up, nerds. I know what computers are. I know what physics are. I know how electricity works. (laughs) Nothing that you could put in that box would run 8K 120 frames ray tracing. Nothing on the planet. Like, this is the size of a sixth of an Xbox one uh like series x like it's it's it's, oh my god (laughs) it's like less than a quarter of a playstation 5 it's it's like it's literally like two apple tvs like maybe four apple tvs stacked two tall back to back with each other probably yeah there is no hardware that exists outside of science fucking fiction i don't care unless this thing costs like seven thousand dollars and has like a quantum computer in it that's cooled by liquid nitrogen which no it's not gonna be that there is no hardware that could fit in here that will do what i just said out loud well, like that's clearly a model made like everything they've shown is clearly like a model yes there's nothing there's no reality behind any of that yes which is fucking redonkulous also this is a dual shot controller Without the touchpad. I oh, know, that's it, absolutely. Is. It's just a DualShock. It's a PS4 controller. Four, yeah. And even the button. Yeah. Even it's got the fucking dots for the speaker. It's yeah, it's yeah, it's got the holes at the bottom where the fucking like, speaker exactly. jack goes into. Like this is bullshit. It's one hundred percent bullshit. Full bullshit. Like um they had a mock up of their their store, which this does show. Oh, you could play grit. Which is that thing that ripped off the horse armor we talked yeah. about a few weeks back. Which is one of the funniest things I've ever uh, seen. So. Decentraland, which is garbage. Uh, Axie Infinity, which is like, you know, lost $600 million worth of uh, NFT stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and other shit. And more. And more. And all the rest. Um, why? Why? Why would you ever? Okay, I'm gonna I wanna take the Web three crypto dudes at face value. Okay, so far no one has made a case to me as to why playing um, Axie Infinity is better than buying the the eighty dollar handheld emulator thing that I bought this week and just playing like any of the Pokemon games on it, like no. any of them, or. Why would you want to be limited to games that are specifically plugged into a crashing financial system in a thing that will never come out? It will never never come come out. out. Some people have 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 tried to dunk on it by like comparing it to the Ouya. The Ouya came out. The Ouya had actual promise. Yeah. 
The Ouya came out too early. That's what mean, happened to the Ouya. The games I played last, this week on the Apple TV are basically Ouya, right? It's like a yeah. it's like a mobile centric, like small, you know. Like the, if the Ouya uh, came out now, I think it would have done really well. It probably would have done better. I mean, the fucking the, again that that handheld Mew thing that I bought that that's coming in tomorrow as we're recording this. That thing's got a cell phone processor in it. Like cell phone Android hardware is up to a point now where you can get pretty good performance out of it. Like, but this this is locked into web. Three horseshit. Here is their roadmap. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! It's Michael, describe to the audience what you see. It's it's uh, okay. <laughs> Imagine if somebody did the um, things and then they had a question mark and then it said profit at the end of it. Right. But they did it seriously. Yeah. And that's exactly what this looks like. <laughs> it, is a, it's like it is a straight line. It it's just a straight goes line from top to bottom. It says 2021 idea. 2021 planning, 2022 console design, hardware development, software development, functional prototype, DFMA, manufacturing, 2024, ready for launch. That shit's impossible. Uh, that shit is literally impossible. It's the most simplified ass fucking roadmap I've ever seen for the development of anything in my life. It's There's no dates. There's nothing. There's no dates. There's no specifics. It's just a list of the steps to make a console. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's, that's all it is. <laughs> it's not even. It's not even them saying we've got these many people, yep. so we can meet these specific dates. Yep. It's just year. Uh, again, like I said, it's it's somebody who took the fucking thing where it's like, uh, it's idea, the building the thing question mark profit. It's that. It's just that. I'll tell. Well, I mean, I, I, like the thing is that I'll tell you exactly what it is. It's a fucking rug pull, like every other yeah. NFT thing. They're gonna put up a thing so you can buy your way into this. You can get into the early access NFT for the blah 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 that'll guarantee your blah blah blah. And because the fucking Web three market is completely unregulated, once they get enough sucker money. They'll disappear and take everyone's fucking money. I bet you Seth Green's going to put money into this. The end. <laughs> it's going to be on a show and everything. Oh, yeah. One of the games in here is the game that the, it's that MMO that the ape guys are supposed to be making. Other side, I think. Oh, is that what that is? I think that's what that is. I don't rem I don't care. Um, I don't. I, really I, don't, don't. I, I, I don't care. If this comes out, you know, I'll be the first to say I'm, I was wrong that it didn't come out. But if it comes out. I will not expect this to do well either way. The thing is, here's the thing. I will buy one of these and play it if it comes out. If it comes out, it's available at a reasonable price, and it is good. Yeah. Like, the thing is that you could put this out. You can cobble together a bunch of fucking hardware. You can make it garbage. You can make it so that, like, okay, it either runs at 4K... 10 frames per second or 8k 5 frames per second or 360p 120 frames per second or like you know 120p with ray tracing turned on like all of that would satisfy those conditions they never said it could do it all at the same fucking that's time true. that's true you know i technically i did not lie to you but it's gonna be garbage it's going to be garbage this isn't the first time we've heard of somebody with a very insane idea for a console yep and it won't be the last. What was the one? What was that one? The Phantom? The Phantom is the, the one. Why was what I was thinking of? <laughs> was the first thing I thought of was the Phantom when the I said that Phantom. sentence. Yeah. If this no one's heard about the Phantom since. Uh, if this comes out. Oh, even Atari had that Atari console thing that was like real expensive. That was uh -huh. basically a, a, not an Atari, emulator. Yeah, it was just an emulator. And that thing was expensive. And it was yep. just an Atari fucking emulator. Machine. That actually came out. It uh, did. Uh, yeah. it, it was very expensive. But yep. Nobody wanted it. Nope. <laughs> Yep, so that's your weekly dose of NFTs are for are garbage and Web3 is grifters. I still can't believe this is a thing. Ooh, they got a Discord open. Oh, look, did they change their logo? Uh, maybe. Uh, Twitter doesn't like it when I'm on this browser. Uh, it looks like they did a little bit. Yep. Oh, yep, my God. They did it looks change even their fucking logo. weirder. And now it looks like a P with a brick inside of it. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it's got like a drippy penis. <laughs> It looks like a drippy square dick. Actually, you know what it is? It's just the logo, but they put a brick on top of it. Yeah. It's all they did. Yep. Oh, my God. It's amazing. Pretty much. <laughs> Some motherfuckers. <sighs> Jesus Christ. That it looks so awful. I keep getting I keep getting the occasional email at my uh, mailrage.com email address where it's just like, hey, do you want to be part of our fast-growing NFT marketplace, blah, blah, blah? And I'm like, bitch, 
have you seen my numbers? You've got to be desperate. <laughs> like, be, they're super desperate. If you're coming to like 300 hits a video guy, like uh, your failure brought you to me. <laughs> yes. Um, Speaking of terrible failures, uh, we had games done quick over the weekend, uh, or over the July 4th weekend. I believe it was over the last weekend. I think so. so recently. Sounds right. Sounds right. And uh, we, there was a bit of a kerfuffle. There was a, uh, a character named Mecca, Mekara Razium, who did Metal Gear Rising. Yay. Based um, on what this happened here, though? <laughs> so, okay. This is really interesting. They did Metal Gear Rising, and then they did the DLC for Metal Gear Rising. They did Metal Gear Rising, and uh, I don't think they made like a new record, but they at least this is a person who just does mostly Metal Gear Rising, like tied their own record. Then they did the DLC. Then it turns out that the DLC was fake uh, hmm. because it was um, it was basically. We've seen this happen a few times before. I watched a really interesting documentary about the people that play those like super, super, super fucking fast Guitar Hero PC games. Yeah. Um, basically, they took their best segments from different runs, made a video out of it, and then because they were doing all this shit remote, they just kind of played the video as their source and then just pretended to hit the controller. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, eventually nobody like caught on right away. But then apparently, people looking at it afterwards, they saw like weird cuts where there shouldn't be cuts. Yeah, there were a few points where the guy stopped using his mouse, but then the things kept working on the screen. Um, so yeah, he apparently said he apparently came clean when confronted yeah. and was like, "Yeah, I did it." Um, and but the thing been, is, like, it was the DLC itself that was fake. It was just the DLC yeah. run that was fake. Yeah, the main game wasn't fake. Like. But you God, know this other thing at the last part is kind of fucked though. He this, only yeah they, they only showed the Black Wolf DLC if he made a specific amount. Yeah, donated, 25, 25 grand. Which is ridiculous. They made, they're like three million, I think, off of this. Um, so, but yeah, uh, apparently they they uh, banned him, deleted all of his uh, runs from the Games Done Quick channel. Yeah. Um, he's not allowed to do it anymore. I'm actually kind of weird because I found like a certain amount of. Uh, I've I've seen a few things about cheating in the speedrun community. Yeah, it happens all the time. And it seems like the problem is that like you're under so much goddamn scrutiny that like why would you try? Because yeah. if 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 you try and fail, the whole thing comes tumbling down. Like your name is now mud. You'll never be allowed back into the, it's the a community. Really like, serious thing. Like because you're looked up. Because when you when you do it and you actually pull it off. Yeah. Not the cheating stuff. I mean the actual speed run. You're like you're looked at as like a god almost. Yeah, because you're able to do some crazy shit. But if it turns out you faked the crazy shit, all the other gods are gonna look down at you and cast you out of a fucking Valhalla. Right. It's fucking crazy. Like how many people risk that thing. Even one of the most famous people on the planet who speed run, the King of Kong. Right. Fucking got caught doing some shit. Yeah. And so it's like guys, like fucking relax <laughs> why are you yeah why i i, I guess i mean like i guess um, like, it's, it's weird because these people live for it and then some for some reason they just they're like i have to be the best but then they fake it and that's the thing that weirds me out it's every just time. well it's it's just weird to me because um it's weird to me because it's like i don't i don't get it because to me it's similar to people that cheat at online multiplayer games and yeah. it's like well you're not you're not actually good at this game you cheated no. like if you were good at the game you would be able to win for real and if you can't win for real and you cheat then congratulations you played yourself right like like no. how could you get any emotional satisfaction knowing that you're a scumfuck cheater and that you didn't do it for real like i'd rather not have an accomplishment than have an accomplishment that i cheated to get exactly like, uh, i'd rather have done my best and failed then pretended that I did my best, and then and but like, knowing your heart of hearts that you didn't, yeah. Because like, then I just feel like sh I would feel I would personally feel like shit about it. Yeah, I feel like shit over just li like being like I did the thing at work, and then it turns out I didn't do it, but then I did it anyways. <laughs> so it's like yeah, it's but that's really it. I've been working on the internet for ten years. I feel bad when I do my best and it isn't good enough, and the internet's like, Bruh! and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's, imagine it's, like. I don't know. It's insane. Yeah, it's the weird. guy. The guy should have used nano machines. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> if he wanted to cheat, he should have done it the way Cedric Armstrong would have done it. Well, he kind of did, right? Like he didn't have a he didn't have a real uh, speed run, so he just made it the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly. <laughs> 
<laughs> Jesus. I love that video so much. Uh, this is the second time in two days that you and I have We have referenced that, that a lot recently. Uh, you know what, though? This did bring me to a really interesting uh, part of the internet where I looked at some other speedrun stuff. And if you want uh, if you want something crazy, Michael, you should check out, um, from Games Done Quick, Sound Voltex Exceed Gear, um, which is a, a rhythm-based... Um, like arcade cabinet that has buttons and dials and the speed that it goes at is fucking unreal. Oh my God. Like, and it like it did a barrel all there for a second. Yeah. The like guy still kept up with that shit. Yeah. Like in fact, um, like this is like my hands hurt just looking at this. This is like this is like later. Like oh, that was at the easy levels where we were before. Like every one of these little dots coming down is one of the button presses. Yeah. Like watching this guy do this is fucking nuts like it's insane holy shit again it's like watching those people that play those guitar hero mods that yeah. like go so fast where it's just like i play guitar hero i know what those dots mean and i can't imagine playing this fast and this thing has four buttons two knobs and two like hold down alt button controllers on yeah. it like this thing is scary yeah it's nuts you go look it up i would have uh, failed within 10 seconds oh yeah yeah um yeah Let's see. Uh, speaking of horrific failures. Oh, I heard about this. Uh, hey, guess who's going to be next at Marvel's Avengers, Michael? Yeah. It's She-Hulk. Um, this happened on an official Xbox live it stream. Did, which is why it's so awkward. Where the host was there with the lead designer of the Avengers. And he's talking about he knows the voice actress who does the voice of she hulk and he's telling a story about them and he's like yeah i don't even know if I can talk. well it's th yeah, he starts this, off saying i don't know if i can even talk I don't about even this talk. this has been announced though right and then like as soon as he like says it the fucking the bleed designer who's on face cam has yeah. just be like no yeah <laughs> my favorite like, thing is the guy could have stopped him at any moment yeah but still let him say all of these things yeah he kind of just like looks off camera like when he realizes what's going on and then there's like a second part where he's like yeah we don't announce this stuff ahead of time like we don't announce this stuff ahead of time We're everyone like, knows though everyone's known for a while now though yeah i did my know. favorite thing because well, what happened was that somebody had said that they knew who the voice actress was going to be, uh -huh. and then another uh, the, the voice actress for Kamala liked the tweet, oh, not knowing it was an official announcement. Uh -huh. And then when they found out, they unliked the tweet, but the damage had been done. <laughs> like again, this goes back to some of the stuff we were talking about in the first part about social media. How the fuck does this happen? Like, it happens very easily. Apparently, how does this happen? Crystal Dynamics, get your shit together. Like, I don't... If I, they had their shit together, Jeff, this game would be amazing. Well, that's true. I was playing it again recently <laughs> while listening to the podcast. Foolish fool. <laughs> and the game glitched out like fucking crazy on me yep. as I was playing, as it does. Like, at one point, a random menu popped up that just said .txt over and over again. <laughs> and I was like, well, this is happening. <laughs> and that was after finishing a mission. And then I was trying to make another mission happen, but the screen was completely blank. What? Which is why it caused that .txt file to pop up to begin with. My goodness. And my, my Hawkeye disappeared for a second. And it was just, it's crazy. And this, yep. was, this was on the PS5 after it's, and this is... All of the updates have happened at this point, so yes, this <sighs> is, it, somehow it somehow it breaks further the more they make stuff for it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess you know we've had a lot of shit about like, um, what was the one where it was the guy that it's like a uh, punk rock band guy who was just like, yeah, man, I've been talking with them about that new Tony Hawk game, and everybody's like, what the fuck, shut up. It's That's like right, yeah. <laughs> some fucking like you know some old punk rock guy. He doesn't give shits like most of them don't they, there's usually when we find out about stuff it's because some guy was like yeah i was i was talking to so-and-so about making this new thing for this game and they're like what what are you talking about that's not <laughs> no one knows that's not a thing anybody has said out loud before and then they're and then they're like was i not supposed to say that <laughs> yeah and it happens a lot lately yeah i don't remember the last time it happened that might have been the last time it happened was that tony hawk one was it uh that norman reedus no yeah norman reedus was the podcast. last time yeah that talking was the last about one like that death stranding 2 it's like yeah i'm making something with the kojima now <laughs> making the new death stranding and they're like wait what, what did you say <laughs> 
they don't, I think that there's a lot of people who they just don't understand how rabid this particular sector of the internet is. They for, don't. Like, they will take any crumb and spin it into fucking gold. Like, it can be the smallest possible thing that somebody said. Yep. Offhandedly, I mean, you said that's the- how the Ghostbusters game got announced. The Ophonic one, yeah. So one of the guys who worked for Ophonic was at a podcast, and he's like, "Oh yeah, we're working on this Ghostbusters game." And they're like, "Wait, wait, 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 wait. go back. <laughs> what did you say?" <laughs> and then when Ernie Hudson did the same thing, yep. When he double confirmed it, yep. When he was there, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm making a, a Ghostbusters game." I'm like, "Wait, what did you say?" <laughs> yeah. Well, fuck, you were talking about the She-Hulk story where just, like, someone liked a tweet. Yeah, someone liked a tweet. And that was that was, that was was it. Like, that was the ending. That was the confirmation of it. Yeah. And it was just, God, it's so funny. Stay the fuck off of Twitter. Don't it's get so on Twitter. It's so fucking funny. Uh, all right. In some less fun news, uh, we got basically confirmation that uh, Modern Warfare 2 is getting uh, beta. Uh, probably. These are leaked dates, but that we're probably getting very similar to previous, which is going to be uh, September 15th through the 19th, September 20 se- 22nd through the 26th. 15th through 19th will be the probably the last of the PlayStation exclusive betas because yeah. they had those. Um, these are four days, you know, uh, so, or all the yeah, yeah, four days each. Uh, probably first two days for pre-orders and last two days open to the public. Um, and then the September 26th, 22nd through 26th is probably going to be the everybody, uh, all all platforms, and then pre-orders first and uh, uh, general second. So. Cool. So when does Godzilla go in? <laughs> I don't know, man. They'd fucking kick that motherfucker out in two weeks or Pretty whatever. Quickly, like, yeah. He showed up, ate their food, and then he left. Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, Michael, Halo Infinite's campaign co-op is uh, getting a play test starting July 11th. So that's happening. Apparently, the beta code is incompatible with like your single player uh, save games. <laughs> that's Which strange, a but real weird. Sure, thing. I guess. But here's the, God. I so hate how long this took. Yeah, because. That game, that campaign, that campaign isn't even that long to begin with. Yeah, and now everyone has beaten it at this point. The people who wanted to. Yeah. So there's no real reason to co-op it that much, that much, because even legendary was just like everything kills you faster. Right. And that's making it a co-op doesn't make that much more fun. Yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Especially with the open world part of it. I don't know what to say. I wish they would put in that. Um, you remember that mod that we saw that made it like third person. That, that mod fun as fuck. was fucking <laughs> awesome. That mod was so cool. Yep. It made Master Chief that much more badass. Yeah. Oh my god, I would love to play Halo like that. I would totally like they, they need, could do that. They should do that. Yeah. Right. Like if they the put this out with did. a third person action thing, and it'd be like, oh, a reason to go back and play it. Yeah. So. The way Resident Evil Eight did. Yes. Yeah. Do that exactly. Mm-hmm. Just do it. I swear. I will play that game again. <laughs> you heard him. Michael made a promise about playing Halo games. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV is uh, coming up on a big patch 6.2, which is going to give everybody their own little island. Uh, apparently, in the island, you'll be able to like farm stuff and raise animals and have a little like uh, fucking Stardew Valley. Uh, um, what's the what's the other one? Harvest Moon kind of yeah. thing. There'll be some quests and stuff going on there. I think this is really interesting because if I remember correctly, I think that Final Fantasy XIV had this weird thing where like player housing was like by lottery and it was really hard to get a house and like yeah, so the issue was that um they were having a housing shortage right because they had only had so much land and they didn't expect that many players to want to have houses <laughs> right so right because right, right. in the beginning it used to be real easy it was it was kind of like as if they had just shown up on america and there was a lot of land everywhere and everyone it was like i'm gonna make a house right and then everyone showed up eventually later on and they're like well there's no places anymore so now you gotta wait for somebody to no longer be playing and for so long that their houses are now up for sale kind right. of thing. It was really weird. Yeah. Because I because this was going on for so long. I remember a friend of mine telling me this when I worked my first support job here in Austin. Uh-huh. And that was like <laughs> six years ago. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. They might have fixed they might have fixed it. I mean, this seems like the ultimate fix, right? Yeah. Giving just people give everybody like a, a place instead. An instance yeah, uh, area, but because you know, like the idea that oh, oh we're running out of real estate in Final Fantasy fourteen, it's just like well, fucking change the put an extra zero on it. Like yeah, I, they didn't think about that apparently. Fucking, it's just it's the land number, man. Like, come it on. It was kind of amazing that that even that could even happen. Yep. Uh, well, speaking <laughs> of Final Fantasy, 
let's get on to some trailers. Uh, we got a trailer for the first DLC for Stranger of Paradise. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, where apparently you'll be fighting the Warrior of Light. No shit. Because, I mean, you know, I haven't played this game, but, like, is this a, is this just a thing? Did nobody see the the gruff guy that's like super, 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 super obsessed with chaos who fights Garland at the end of the very first level? Who's like anybody who's played Final Fantasy one knows that Garland is like a time traveling protagonist that was corrupted. Yep. Like, uh, come on, guys, you can f- you can piece this shit together. Um, but yeah, they've got the Warrior of Light with his dumb his dumb horns in there. His little group of uh, of stupids, and you get to find. I feel like between this and that Shadowbringers fourteen expansion, that like the Warrior of Light is oh, getting yeah. cast as the Bado a lot recently. Well, so. it's, it's it's one of those things that game companies like to do, where they're like, "What if you fought the good guys?" Kind yeah. of thing. Like you remember when Raccoon City Operation Raccoon City came out? I do remember that. That was that was its big selling point. It's I like, do hey, do you want to kill Leon? Also, I don't know if you realize this, but that was Bahamut. And there's like a part in this trailer sure. where he's talking about the deal that he made with Bahamut. Yeah. And then like there's a fucking Dark Souls boss fight with Bahamut, uh, who's very small <laughs> in comparison. Um, did you ever watch the video that Tess and I did this where at the very end it's like they 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 fight Garland and then his armor falls off and it's the fourth member of your party. It's the little girl. I did see that. Yeah. And then she's like, "You can't ever stop chaos," and he just goes bullshit it turns around it hits a button on his phone and new metal starts playing it's one of the funniest things i've ever seen in my life so awesome ever so stupidly awesome like because it's a guy with it's a it's a final fantasy game with an ipad an ipod in it yep they can't frank sinatra music oh my god it's so weird it's so weird it means frank sinatra is in the final fantasy universe guys i I love that i don't i don't even want to know what team ninja did (laughs) like what what insanity happened i don't know to make this happen i love it i love how stupid and saying that the whole thing turned out to be anyway yeah this is coming out at the end of the month so if you got final fantasy uh stranger paradise it doesn't even their logos don't even look right in this no trailer they don't match at all they're all on top of each other. Just fucking move this shit up and make this bigger. What are you doing? Tales, Trials of the Dragon King, uh, July 20th. Uh, also, if you have the season pass, it's out there. So. Yeah. Good for them. Uh, Michael, I know it's not your birthday, but I did get you a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure trailer. Yay. Yes. Uh, latest tra- uh, uh, trailer for All-Star Battle R. Um with reveals from four, six, and eight. Uh, no fucking golden, uh, golden wind or whatever. What's the? That's five. Yeah. Gold is magic. What? What's gold, golden experience? Golden experience. Is that what it's called? I forgot. Um, I think that. Yeah, cause the actual name is I think is golden experience, but they can't call it that. <laughs> what's it called in the states? I golden wind. Golden wind. Okay, yeah. I was right. Okay. Uh, yeah. So they show some characters that I feel like we already knew were going to be in. They show. Um, yeah, I mean, just people Adjoin from and all these guys. Because uh, some of them weren't in um, the original version of this, but they've already been announced, right? The yeah, a lot of these were announced. Stone Ocean characters. Um, some of them, like I said, they weren't even they weren't originally a part of the. Some of these I think already were though. Is the thing? Yeah. Um. So it's not some. They're not too surprising. Like Poochie was already, of course, in that. Right. But a lot of Part Eight people were not at all part okay. of it because originally that Part Eight had just come out when this first came out. That's Stone Ocean. Um, no, that's, um, I don't remember the name of... Oh, the one after with the sailor? Eight. Yeah, I, I don't remember or whatever. the name of part eight, to be honest. Uh, part seven, Steel Ball Run, but I don't remember what eight is. Okay. Well, so did you Soft see the, white, the new characters? Do you know what's going to happen here with these three new characters? Um, I heard about that, but I hadn't seen any, like, actual gameplay for it. One of them is, uh, like, uh, Yamaga- Yamagishi, the crazy hair lady that kidnaps a uh, little dude in Diamond yeah. is a Breakable. And Koichi, yeah, she, she's the one who ends up dating Koichi, which I think is kind of funny. Yeah, and but yeah like, she wasn't in the original one either. I watched her in, uh, um, I think she was part of The Spake uh, Roni Kenshin or whatever, that spinoff with the artist. Oh, the Rohan one? Yeah, yeah, where it's like he's telling uh, her and the little guy's stories in like a cafe about his various adventures. And that's like the framing device for that show. That makes sense. Rohan is, is fucking weird. Rohan, Rohan is a weird <laughs> character because he's a he's an insert, an author insert. He's so bizarre. Uh, so yeah, she was one. We got three new character announcements. We got her. We got um, Diamond is Unbreakable Jojo. Jojo uh, 
Josuke. Jotaro. Jotaro, yeah. Fucking, I can't keep them all straight. Yeah, part so, four, Jotaro, Jotaro. I don't know if he's going to be, like, mechanically different or if this is just, like, a cosmetic thing. I doubt like, he'll be super, super different. Because, I mean, he's... What's his stand? Uh, Star Platinum. Yeah. But his outfits that matches the way he looked then. The same with Star Platinums. Yeah, it's basically the, the same thing. Um, I think his special's different. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, finally, the last one is uh, Foo Fighters from um she's from part six yeah, from stone ocean yeah who she was in the she's first an interesting one half of uh, of that one she yeah she's real fucking weird everybody in stone ocean is weird as shit yep and that's saying something like diamond is unbreakable is positively pedestrian compared to stone ocean uh, it's just like again i just had to get to the part where it got gay like it just wasn't fun until it was real flamboyant it's, and weird it's <laughs> like, pretty gay it's a pretty gay show um it was going to be even gayer, but the editor stopped him. But that's not a joke, by the way. <laughs> that's a real thing that happened. Yeah. Because Jolene's um, love interest in it was supposed to be a woman. Yeah. But they were like, no, that's too gay. <laughs> that's and too gay for JoJo? <laughs> like, we're, we're, we're still in, the, like, the 80s or 90s at this point. <laughs> <laughs> the world hasn't accepted gayness we can't it's too gay i'm sorry i just like I'm, I'm sorry i've never seen the poses the poses of jojo's characters should have clued you in <laughs> that's like, why if you read the manga like when he first shows up he has this super womanly figure yeah because he was supposed to be a woman <laughs> and then they're like no too gay too gay she needs to bang dudes they're like okay fine uh but i'll make him kind of gay also <laughs> they're adding in this character who so he is, was in the original part he was dlc in the original right no he was part of it still but he was, was um, DLC. well he's dlc now because he wasn't you know he's not a jojo character right he's like the character made i think by the guy i can't remember what he is it's a weird fucking like part of the main a part of japanese culture i don't understand <laughs> yeah somebody explained it to me once and i forgot already forgot it all I, I the article that i had in front of this basically was like he was the guy that was he was a character from the manga that the the, the creator did before jojo's bizarre yeah. adventure so and, and when he was Bow. in the original when he was in the original uh the part eight story was just him fighting him oh if i remember correctly, because they didn't have anybody else from part eight it was just part eight josuke okay so they couldn't do anything with it so yeah, I don't know. What's that do? I'm excited still. I'm really yeah. excited because they're adding more characters, and I'm a big fan of part part four Jotaro's outfit. To be honest, mm -hmm. I really like that that Star Platinum, and I'm very very I'm very excited because I loved playing this game when I had it. The mm -hmm. only reason I don't have it anymore is because I was a PS3 game, and I needed I needed rent money, so I sold my PS3 with all my stuff. And I'm hoping it has all the outfits because it took forever to make the to get all the outfits in the original version. Okay. Because there's a lot of great alternate outfits. My favorite is a tequila tequila Joseph, if I remember if if I remember correctly, he's in the game. Yeah. Which is him and his his woman outfit from part two. Uh yeah, I don't know. I think I think it'll be really interesting. I keep whenever I see this, I keep thinking back to uh, you telling me like all the things that people remember about like when when we played this game yeah when aaron and i played this this was the official <laughs> rage select fighting game when it was aaron played it fucking psychotic yeah, like it was insane it's you could say it you had um, not had seen the show at this point yeah so yeah and now i actually know like i don't know two thirds of the characters here my like, favorite thing is that you know more about the later ones than i do where i know more about the earlier ones than you do yeah I was thinking about going back and watching Diamond is Unbreakable again because Diamond is Unbreakable. It's really... It's a lot of fun. It's very fun, and it moves, man. Every episode, it moves. The only I problem is... I'm a big is, fan of Jonathan Joestar, though. Uh, my, my special little man who is a <laughs> gigantically buff 17-year-old. <laughs> the only pro I mean, like, I don't know. It's, it, I tell you what. It actually works better because everybody kind of dresses a little bit more conservatively and Diamond is Unbreakable. Whereas when I got to Golden Wind and they're just like, how will we find the stand user in this crowd? And I'm like, look for the person that looks like a circus gay. Like, yeah. <laughs> like what are you talking about? Part three was a lot easier to be like, to, to legitimately believe like the stand user can be anybody does anybody have fishnets on that's yeah. your stand user motherfucker the best my favorite thing about that is there's a it's a series of memes where people take like images of people that look fucking crazy yeah and that's what they put right They're like it could be any of these people <laughs> and the one the latest one is a guy who's wearing a vest made out of condoms <laughs> and like and a thong so it's just like it could be anybody it's like the stand user <laughs> yeah obviously <laughs> um yeah the stand yeah the stand users are fucking crazy but yeah in part three 
you could actually, you legitimately were like, I don't know who it could be, uh, at least at first. And then eventually uh, it became a little more obvious as it went on. Yeah. Uh, speaking of anime, we got another, we got an announcement trailer for the My Hero Academia Ultra Rumble is coming to the PS4. This is that MMO, right? Or Battle, or Royale. Battle Royale. Yeah. Uh, that was on, it was going to be phones, phones only before. Uh, I'm actually really excited to try this. I'll give it a shot. I mean, you know, it's a little <laughs> weird that like, that, that All Might would be in any team and it's not it's, win. It's a bit, yeah, <laughs> like, it's a bit OP for All Might to show up. Um, it really could have, should have just been the, 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 the students, students and then just have the All villains. Might be like an announcer or something. Yeah. It, it would have made more sense. But you, if it's if you're playing a, a game like this, you kind of want to use All I mean, Might at least once. This could, this could not be accurate to the comics. If it no. was, it, it, then it, everything would be just you know one punch and then the thing would be over like exactly. by certain characters right so um but yeah i mean you know it, it never was the worst idea in the world i'm not a battle royale fan but i am such a my hero academia fan that i will probably try this I, yeah at least once Sounds like a fun idea <laughs> yeah like it's 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 the kind of thing that i would want from a battle royale just like weird dumb shit that's not like a, a shooter that makes it exciting because of it it's also really weird for this trailer because um it's the English dub, and I do not watch the English dub. That's right. You've never, you don't really. Well, I, I actually started watching the English dub when I watched, when I first watched it. So yeah, hearing all the English coming out of these characters' mouths, I'm like, ooh, gross. No, stop it. I really appreciate <laughs> Christopher Sab Sabat's All Might, though. Yeah. So really, the reason for that is because Japanese All Might is, um, fucking what's his name from JoJo Part Three. Mm -hmm. He's um. The guy who has uh, the Firebird. I, I can't believe I forgot his name. I don't know. Um, Abdul. Okay. Yeah, he's he voices Abdul in, oh, okay. in Georgia Bizarre Adventure 3. So I can't separate the two in my mind. I get it. So that happens every time he talks. Uh, let's see. We also got a new trailer for Digimon Survive, a uh, new Digimon game coming out, showing the gameplay. Um, I'll be honest, this looks... I'm not a Digimon person. This looks terrible to me. I haven't uh, watched Digimon in, uh, in decades. It's like there's a lot of like first person kind of talking to people, uh, making decisions, and then like you can see the 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 gameplay is more like well, um, it's a visual novel. Well, it actually has like a tactical kind of a battle thing set up. No, oh, but I mean everything else is like a visual novel, yeah. which is why it's strange as hell. So then they've got these kind of like JRPG battles. With the Digimon. This feels like it was a phone game originally. Yeah, probably. Especially with even the, the animations for the phone. Or not the phone, for the fighting. Yeah. These look like things you would put on a phone. It looks like when you take... In fact, I think it is a phone. Look at this the screen here. Is this is this a full-on phone game? It looks like a phone game. When power comes above Digimon Survive. I thought this was going to be on other stuff. Uh, it says pre-order today. We'll see what it shows on there. Bandai Namco. Digimon Survive. Pre-order today. Uh, PlayStation yeah, Four, Xbox that's One, Switch. Weird. Yep, it, um, it must have had to have been a phone game originally. With with the way those visuals were there, yeah, like it, it showing on a phone. Yeah, this had to have been a phone game. Originally. Yeah, the very simplistic animations uh, that would run on anything, right? Yeah. Um, I yeah, uh, I'm not a Digimon guy. I don't get it. It's not my thing. It's not that I don't get it. I don't want to get it. I've never tried to get it. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Uh, I'm not a pocket monster guy. I'm a fucking lesbian golf guy digimon uh, was a very different show uh, than what pokemon was but i don't know it's coming out july 29th maybe i can coax matt frank over here to fucking you just, should yeah. just 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 turn on the microphone and walk away and let him yell about digimon for four hours and make if, like eight parts it'll be amazing um let's see we also last week we got the japanese trailer but this week we got confirmation that ultra kaiju monster rancher is coming to the it's coming to the west and you know we got a full um, english trailer for it so this was actually left out of the nintendo indie direct from last week but this trailer was in the japanese version the japanese version of this trailer oh, okay uh, i don't know if you know this i heard about it but i didn't look into it but it's basically just Monster Hunter, except Ultraman monsters. Well, it's Monster Rancher, yeah. Yeah, Monster Rancher, but uh, Ultraman monsters. Which is fucking crazy. So, like, very specifically, the specific Ultraman 
monsters and then you raise them and then you make them go compete and like do chores and get stronger and then eventually you can merge them together at the very end of this trailer they show the two of these guys merge together i appreciate that japan has been more willing to give us their very specific games lately <laughs> yeah if only we could get some of those ultra battle games one of these days they're weird shit i think that was what they're called um did you ever hear of those no there were those so for a long time ago since the nintendo to i think about the at least when i was paying attention no the great battle called the great battle series they were crossovers of whatever gundam was at the time mm. whatever old common writer was at the time and whatever ultraman it was at the time oh. and the three of them team up to fight enemies okay and they made a bunch of them throughout the years and they were a lot of fun at least most of them were a lot of fun i never got to play all of them but the ones i did were really cool and they're always like sds so like they were always the same size, so it's like it would be like an RX seventy eight that's like the same size as the Kamen Rider hanging out with an Ultraman. Okay. And I was just like, this is fucking weird, but I love this. <laughs> uh, I do like the fact that the that the kaiju in here look like goofy guys in suits. Yeah, like they just they didn't like make them try to look more like a monster. They just look like dudes in rubber suits. They look exactly <laughs> the way they should, and I love that. So, uh, let's see, we got a trailer for Bio Mutant, Michael. Bio Mutants coming to the PlayStation 5. I forgot about that. Are you excited? Mm. No. Not really. No is the answer. You're yeah. not excited. Nobody's really all that excited. Bio Mutant was kind of universally panned, so. Yeah, not everyone, not everyone really cared about it. <laughs> yeah. Less said about that, the better. Uh, and then last but not least, speaking of things that you don't want to hear anything about, Vamp Valkyrie, not Vampire, Valkyrie <laughs> Elysium. It's more got, than time, guys. Uh, got an official release trailer. Um... This is that Valkyrie profile yeah. game that we talked about. That, that third person action one. Yep. Uh, we were like, this looks like a game. It looks slightly, slightly better, but I think that's because they cut a better trailer for it. Yeah. When they, I think the models have got more detail on them. Yeah. When they pan out during the action parts, uh, everything is still empty as fuck. It looks kind of bland and generic. Um, I don't know why I would care about this this if this was like a remake of a ps2 game or something like i don't know maybe but yeah if I, if you had told me that's what it was i would have accepted that yeah like i think when near replicant was coming out and they were putting out trailers for that i noticed that everything was very sparse there wasn't a lot of like yeah everything was just big empty areas with no people or items or anything in it um and you know i think bryce pointed out that it was like well, yeah, this was like a PlayStation 3 game or like yeah. an early PS3 or PS2 game or whatever. Uh, but this just doesn't do a whole lot for me. It doesn't. It's, it looks like a very like mediocre action game. Yep. Which in a, in, a, in a world where God of War exists. Right. And I mean the new God of War. I don't mean the old ones. Yeah. You don't really. It's not really. <laughs> it doesn't really sell you I anything. could be playing Babylon's Fall right now. <laughs> Right now, if I wanted to play a boring third-person action game. <laughs> and it would be like one or two of you there. Yep. Dozens of you, maybe, um, if you're lucky. Yeah, I don't know. This Again, this looks it kind of reminds me of like Stranger of Paradise a little bit, like this kind of third-person action. But yeah, real, Stranger of Paradise had a lot of dumb shit going on to real, sell you on the idea more. Yeah, yeah like a really earnest Stranger of Paradise. But um, I'll tell you what, though. We did get a piece of really good news from this announcement. What's that? Uh, Square is putting out Valkyrie Profile Lenneth uh, on PlayStation consoles in September. Oh, that's fun. Uh, that was a, a, a originally, I believe, a PlayStation 1 game and then got ported to PSP. Um, okay, so is this the PSP one? Yes, it'll be the PSP version. Uh, yeah. I love when the people, when uh, companies do that. I would love for Konami to release the PSP version of... Um, rondo of blood mm. that, that game was pretty cool i yep. love the way that i loved visually how that game looked yeah i mean we're getting the um i guess the they've run out of things to re-release because we're also getting uh crisis core right yeah we're getting crisis core from so, Square, yeah another psp game uh i actually remember playing this where it was kind of a real weird interesting game it was very well reviewed so i'm not entirely sure about that new valkyrie profile game but i will play leneth because yeah leneth actually looks pretty solid i really liked that game when it came out uh let's see uh, there's a new Gwent game out right now. Ooh. Right now. That was fast. That yep. was, came out of nowhere. Uh, this is a roguelike Gwent game. That's interesting. It's like randomized. It's like a $10. It's technically being sold as like a $10 expansion, I think, to the free-to-play Gwent game that's on Steam right now. Um, 
and it's called Rogue Mage. Uh, it's like single player, PVE, randomized, supposed to be kind of to cater more to that crowd. Um, I don't know. Probably going to get a video on that at some point on here, but it was definitely a, hey, we announced this and it's out, which is always a little bit like, do you guys, is it? Is it bad? Like, why would you do that? <laughs> yeah, like, just kind of like yeah. only Scott Cawthorn does this. Uh, the, one, the one other time it happened, and we were like, we were generally surprised in a good way. Yeah, was when Apex did that. Yes, yes, that, that was a crazy fucking time. But yeah, that's out. Boom, done. Uh, Fantasy Star Online Two is coming to uh, PlayStation games um, a little bit later on August thirty first. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but Fantasy Star Online, like I believe it started on PlayStations in Japan, Online 2, right? Online 2 did, at least. Uh, and then it came to the PC, and then it came to Xbox, but it still is not out on PS4, PS5. Yeah, yeah. So. Which is fucking weird as shit. Yeah. Fantasy Star is a strange one, because it's like one of those ones, it's, it's a very rabid fan base, but not enough to always make those games come out here, yeah. which is interesting. Just absolutely fascinating me. Yep. So, yeah, in August, you can find that out. And let's see. I probably should have put this closer to the other one because it made more sense that way. But oops, oops, oops. Uh, Forspoken has been delayed to 2023. Oh, no. Yep. Forspoken. Michael, I forgot about that game, to be honest. Your favorite <laughs> game, Forspoken. Yeah. Which is um, a shame because it actually does look like it could be a good game. Yeah. I mean, it says they say it needs more polish. I'd rather it be polished and good than come out early and be garbage. I'm so cool with that, yeah. Uh, Plus, it, yeah, again, it's it's a nice new it's a new IP, and I would rather them make a new IP than another Final Fantasy, whatever, whatever. Little strange when you consider that um, that Valkyrie profile game that was announced earlier this year is coming out this year. Oh God, I didn't even think and about this, that. For spoken that was announced like two years ago, Quite a while ago is yeah. now coming out next year. Also, Crisis Core is coming out this year. For also spoken weird. is not coming out this yeah, year. Also so, weird. Uh, very Maybe they're trying to put NFTs in it. Uh, <laughs> oh God! It's gonna I be know. on Web three. It's gonna be on that console. Oh, it's gonna be on the console. It's gonna be the first thing <laughs> the out on that Square thing. Enix console. Um, so I'm not really that bummed about for spoken because I'm not really invested in spoken, but I am bummed that Sea of Stars has gotten pushed out to 2023. This is the kind of Chrono Trigger style RPG from the Messenger. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, people that has the two. I don't know if they're lovers or siblings or I something like remember. partners. <laughs> I don't know what their deal is. I um, never finished the Messenger, so. But this is also a prequel to the Messenger. Yeah. This like takes place like thousands of years before the Messenger, so. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, uh, the Messenger is crazy fucking game. Really like the Messenger. Messenger's cool. You should go play the Messenger. Uh, but yeah, they basically just put out a thing. I like the fact that they're self-aware. They said, uh, as we are closing in on our very big milestone, the road to launch becomes clearer, and we find ourselves here with a large body of text and our logos at the bottom, keeping in mind our two main priorities, quality of life for our team and quality for the finished game. We can now confirm that CSTARS will be released 2023. Part of this is also so they don't have to crunch to get it out this year. Which is fair, and Which... I love I love how meta they were about the idea yep. of, of the announcement, at least. Yep. I'm totally fine with that. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> I don't have a good transition here because <laughs> I'm starting to get real tired. Um, Silent Hill 2 PC modders have um, have been working hard on Silent Hill 2 uh, to make a version called the Enhanced Edition. They put out a video this week that showed some kind of interesting stuff. Like one of the things that they showed was um, going through the um, uh, going through the full motion video and running all the frames through like AI enhancers uh, okay. uh, to up res it a little bit. But the biggest thing is that apparently uh, Silent Hill 2 had a problem where it was never made for multi-core processors. And so the audio engine would start getting fucked up, not knowing which core to start sending processing data to, oh. and it would stutter, and then the whole game would crash. Now, up until now, apparently the uh, fix for that had been, well, when you run it, disable it from running on anything but one core. But this team was like, nah, and they rewrote the entire audio processing like code from scratch oh my God. to make it compatible <laughs> with multi, uh, uh, multi-core multi systems. Good for them. Um, Those crazy bastards. Again, this is why I want Red Dead to come out, because like, look at the level of fucking shit that people are putting into Silent Hill 2, for God's they sake. They go out of their way to make some amazing things. Yeah. This is why I would never begrudge PC gaming. Yeah. Um, well, not entirely. I'll still begrudge them in certain ways. I mean, sometimes they're dicks. 
Yeah, know. sometimes they're just fucking weird. But but like you know, the, remember that when we played RE4, those RE4 guys went and found like the church with the yeah fucking uh, texture to take 8K pictures of the texture. It's this crazy fucking thing to give me a 30 gig update to RE4 to make it look fucking amazing to the point where I don't know why we need a remake. I know it's I'm true. Sorry. I can almost got through this without bitching about that. So <laughs> uh, very close, Jeff. Yeah, we check it out. It. Check it out. Uh, let's see, Michael. You can explain to me why. Halo's E3 trail, Halo 2's E3 trailer being added to the Master Chief Collection is an interesting thing. Do you know what this is? Uh, which trailer was this one? Uh, okay, so apparently it was like a demo that was in Earth City, and it was like a big thing. Oh, with this demo. And then that level never made it into the game. No, that's why it's a big deal. So what happened was that when Halo 2 was announced, one of the things they showed in one of the original trailers demos was a level on earth yeah and um because that was that was the original f- climax of the game mm. was master chief making it to earth to fight the covenant yeah uh instead it just became a multiplayer map because they couldn't finish it in time okay which is why halo 2 ends on a cliffhanger because they it was supposed to end like this ah and so that's why and it's they exciting. showed off the last level at e3 they did what that's yeah. ballsy this was one of this was one of the most this because that was because the way for people who don't remember how halo 2 ends uh, halo 2 ends with the covenant finding out where where earth is and they're going there to 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 attack it yeah and so the ending is that master chief has stowed away on a ship and the last thing they say is he's like well what are you doing he's like well, i'm finishing i'm finishing this fight and then and then it cut like or i think he says the i need a weapon line in that point or some point i can't remember if he does yeah and then it just ends and I remember being so mad uh-huh. when that happened as a teenager because I was like, where's the the level at the end like where you go on Earth and you get to fight the Covenant? Because I remembered that trailer. Ah. Because okay. I, I was like, I was very, I, was, I remember looking at my cousin because we did it on co-op. I was, like, I was like, where the fuck is that level? Like, that was the whole thing. That was the whole reason I was excited because we were going to like, that was the climax of it, you being on Earth. Right. So they, had the re- they rewrote a lot of stuff. That's, how, that's why 3 opens with him falling to earth instead of you know like him being there to fight him and stuff so that's why it's a really huge deal because that it never it never got released interesting on, like on the actual stuff so that. so yeah it looks like 343 is kind of trying to like put together that level to patch into halo 2 that's really exciting actually uh, that's really exciting that's kind of nuts now that you tell me the story that that's kind of weird like that it's just like it'd be like um you know uh, taking l- levels that we saw in old trailers and then that we got excited about and putting them back into games like that's a very odd concept but. yeah but it's so really cool that's why that's why you remember when people were always speculate that shit yeah with those demon souls with the souls games they're like well maybe they'll they'll put in those those cut contents yeah that's for some reason everybody hopes that's what they'll do but they never do the weirdest thing is that from software is putting in the cut content now which is now, very strange yeah. So, uh, and last but not least, uh, about a year ago, there was a group online that was, um, oh, this is October, 2020. There was a group online that was trying to, uh, put together a project where they were going to digitize every single Super Nintendo manual. That's a fucking great idea. Um, and they did it at least for English language ones. So, oh, that's uh, cool. if you go to, uh, well, it's a Google doc. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this Google doc, you can find it. Um, Basically, it's got it's all been uh, put on archive.org. So it's like uh, it's just you can page through all of these old Super Nintendo game manuals, which is pretty cool. That's really cool because yeah. a lot of those have plot points and stuff that are never mentioned in the games. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you can go check that out. Dragon Ball Hyper Dimension French language. I'm still amazed Manual. that game never came out of America. That game would have been fucking sold gangbusters if it did. Yep. Uh, and that's our show. Hey, if you enjoyed it, uh, patreon.com forward slash rage. Like, I'm sorry. I don't want to have to do this any more than you do, but you know, uh, I know times are tough, but if you got a few bucks to spare, you can always spare them by, uh, pledging over on patreon.com forward slash rage. Like, uh, oh my God, family dog. I forgot about that show. I, I completely forgot, about, forgot that that about that show. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. That just unlocked a memory in my head. Uh, I forgot about that. Um, what was the end of Final Fight? Okay, never mind. Sorry. Added oh, Final Fight that oh, oh, <laughs> um, yes, go to patreon.com forward slash rage site. Help us out. Kick us some bucks. Uh, and come to the Discord server. You can play multiplayer with us. You can do do stuff. 
Uh, and Rage Suck stays in business. Also, there's a shitload of bonus videos. Michael and I are playing currently through Duke Nukem Forever. Yeah, uh, we're getting closer to the ending. We made it. We made it closer to the ending. We're pretty close. Uh, we're not exactly there. We still have a, a little bit to go. We're but, yeah. pretty close. Oh, this is a, amazing stories, right? It was part of that. Was it part of that? Did they spin on off into its own thing? I've forgotten. It might have, but I do remember this family dog. Um, Brad Bird. Brad Bird. Holy fuck! Oh my god! I, I definitely need to rewatch <laughs> this later. <laughs> uh, weird. Um, anyway, yes, uh, Michael, tell the fine folks of the internet where they can find you online when you're not here, helping me remember old old cartoons and shit. Yep. Like, uh, you can find me at oneofus.net. We do a lot of movie and television reviews. Uh, we recently did a review for Minions, uh, Rise of Guru. There's also a review for Thor, uh, Love and Thunder out there. I wasn't on it. Uh, I think it was Chris, uh, Danny Danger, and Wright who okay. were on that. So I still recommend listening to that, though. Yeah. Yeah, check it out. That, and that's the podcast. All the news, all the all the saying stuff, and the news, and talking, and I'm, I'm, I'm done. I can't talk anymore. I got to go. I got to go eat the rest of the chili talks. I really don't want to. I'm, I'm going to do it.